Chapter 21 Alter, 6, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Han Su, who was smoking on the cloud snack, opened his mouth while he looked at Sang Jin. What do you seek for? Han Su could vaguely guess. That this guy had killed those guys for him instead. If he had the thoughts of getting rid of him then he could have just pushed them in while he was busy fighting the beast. But Sang Jin had helped in a way that he could survive. By warning him with a shout from above and acting after the beast's movements had slowed down. Hu Sang Jin breathed in and out as he looked at Han Su. He had been thinking Han Su only until now. I want to follow Han Su, this was clear. This had sprung up from three things. Longing, envy and a pursuit for safety. But he didn't know what exactly would happen from now. But he thought he couldn't be with Han Su because he was weak and because of this he thought that he just needed to become stronger. But whilst he was pondering over this, Suyol had approached him. When Sang Jin saw Suyol and his friends approach him he thought of something. That this was a trap in order to bring harm to Han Su. But he followed just to see hear their story. If they crossed the line he was going to beat them down. It was clear that he was the strongest after Han Su and he had created a large gap between him and the others. And so he had thought that he could become like Han Su. Maybe not as much as Han Su but he thought that he could at least beat around 10 people. But this was a very big misunderstanding. There only a single number between him and Han Su in ranking but there was a gap between them that could not be caught up and smashing down a large group was something only Han Su could do. He understood the moment he got surrounded by the ten people. That he could not beat them. But he could not deject them here. Then they will definitely kill him in a manner so that Han Su wouldn't notice. From the way they were talking it seemed like that they were going to go hit Han Su from the back no matter what happened. Kill him or take him alive then kill Han Su with him there. There were only two options. So he followed since he couldn't die on that spot. They had told him to try going to his friends but if he had turned around in that situation then he probably would have been stabbed from behind at that spot. Sang Jin thought of countless things whilst he walked. How he would get out of this situation. The anxiousness of possibly dying had calmed down as he walked with the ten. The thought of him having become a lot stronger had been replaced with the thoughts of his lack of strength. These guys were scared of Han Su so they couldn't act out in the front and had stayed behind him. While they were throwing empty threats at them straightforwardly. He had to look good in Han Su's eyes but if he couldn't even take care of these ten guys what could he do? His head started spinning at a crazy rate while in was in danger. And at the same time he, who had seemed very big, started to look smaller and something became clear to him. Very very clear. There is no way that I can be with Han Su by becoming strong independently. The thought of being approved after becoming strong and then following him was arrogant in itself. And the thought of being approved after leading a large group was the same. He realized after calming down and judging himself objectively. That no matter how hard he struggled alone or even with a bunch of scrubs, the gap between Han Su would only become wider. No, it was likely that he will become even weaker by being near weaker people. And at the same time longing, envy and admiration had disappeared and a different mindset had risen up. That jealousy or longing was something that he should have only when he had the leisure to. The current him was in no state to do so. If he acted arrogantly just because he got a little bit stronger and get attacked by a mob then he would just get killed. He had to set somebody faster than him in front of him as the goal and chase them zealously. When his thoughts had cleared up, one thing became clear. That he wasn't in the situation to question a lot of things. He just had to catch up while he was still within his eyesight. He will approve of me if I become strong. He had been looking at this situation in a very laid-back manner. But how? He had already lost his chance. He had to prove his worthiness in order to catch up to him. And at that moment he saw Suyo and the others who were walking next to him. Aha! This is it. 
Hanser's existence was fear in itself but at the same time he was a very tempting existence which dropped numerous artifacts and ruins along with his death. Like a tiger which was scary to no extent but drops a very tempting skin upon death. People who would want to send Hansu into traps like these would probably keep coming up. If they don't die then they will bother him without giving up. So he realized. How he could get approved by Hansu. How he could help Hansu. Hansu. Use me, hmm. Hansu showed a conspicuous color as he gazed at Sang Jin. And then Sang Jin bit down on his teeth inwardly. I've had the wrong thoughts until now since he had Han Su were running towards the same goal, he thought that they could become acquaintances. Because he was misled by useless thoughts and emotions he didn't realize the main point and thought that he just needed to become strong. But he was wrong. He and Han Su had different goals from the start. While he was looking out to survive day by day, Han Su was running while looking at something in. The distance without stopping. While they were struggling in order to survive and become stronger, he was acting with his personal rules. From dividing runes perfectly from the start to every little detail. He had to keep moving but he didn't hurry and always followed the things he had to. The moment he realized this was when he didn't kill Taesun and his friends and just left them alive. There was no such thing as being disabled here. If you don't cut off their lifeline then they could come back even higher health but even so he had left them alive and created future troubles. Even though it would have been more convenient to take their runes after killing them. And it was like that on the altar too. Though it would have been a piece of cake for Han Su to just take the runes from them, he had given them the options. Sang Jin, who had pondered his actions for a while, realized it finally. That Han Su was ignoring the axe which would bring him instantaneous rewards because he was looking at something in the distance. Though it would be of benefit to becoming stronger in the moment, he knew that it would bring harm to what he wanted to accomplish. Sang Jin didn't know if this was because of his psychic powers or because he was smart. But once he figured this out, one thing became clear. The way he could become useful to Han Su. I don't know why you don't kill people. But as I see it, it isn't that you don't kill them because you don't want to kill them right. Even monkeys would realize it. If he could do that much then killing was a piece of cake. Which meant there was another reason why Han Su didn't kill. And by leaving them behind, it seemed like that he just needed to not dirty his hands. Sang Jin spoke as he looked at Han Su. Use me. I will dirty my hands instead of you. But then take me with you. No, allow me to follow you, Han Su always acted with a clear goal. But because he looked at things on the long term, it was likely that he needed to endure things that grabbed onto his ankles momentarily. And in that moment, he could do things instead of Han Su. Like a cleans who cleans after Han Su so he could focus on his own goals. Since he had already threw away his first chances, this was the only chance for him to be accepted by him. I could only use a method that put you in danger as well because I was weak but I can make sure that there won't be a time where I even get close to your line, Han Su was special. There will definitely be guys who will be jealous of and envy Han Su and block his path. And out of those people, there will be guys which Han Su would leave alone because of this personal rules and his goals. He was willing to thoroughly erase those guys. So Han Su can focus on his own goals. And for that he will become strong by following Han Su around. Since he, who had followed him for a few days, had become the strongest after Han Su. By helping Han Su to run faster, he, who is also following Han Su, would also become faster. And if he had another small wish he wanted to find out what Han Su's goals were. But this would be completed naturally if he stuck by Han Su and helped him. Han Su, who had been listening to his story, chuckled. Even if I say yes, what would you if it's a situation where you cannot follow? For example getting pushed off forcefully, then Song Jin's expression froze. He thought that he was being abandoned. But his thoughts changed after seeing Han Su who was smiling in amusement. Thought there must be something in the second tutorial, he didn't know what but he had seen it with his psychic powers. 
that they would forcibly be separated in the second tutorial area. Sang Jin clenched his teeth. Then. I will become stronger and come find you. Let's at least go back to our old relationship. Han Su laughed as he responded. Go down, damn it, is it not possible? Sang Jin bit his teeth for a moment and then shouted loudly. Kong Han Su. Can't a person can make a mistake once in a while. I had to make a choose something I didn't have a choice against because I was weak but I'm just starting. Fuck just try using me. And if I'm still useless then you can leave me behind. He wasn't worthy enough. He wasn't enough until now and he wasn't still enough. But he gained another chance he had the confidence to do better. Fuck. Just once. Please. Han Su threw down the cloud snack which he had finished smoking and then spoke whilst looking at Sang Jin. Don't misunderstand things. Come here tomorrow around one. I would have killed that thing below by then, huh? And then take all the runes that are below. You killed those ten so you should take them. Well. Let's see each other later with smiles on our faces, Sang Jin's expression became bright at those words. And Han Su mumbled inwardly as he looked at that Sang Jin. Hmm, though it's a little awkward Han Su thought of what he and Iris talked about in the past. Han Su nodded at those words. Since that was always Iris' problem. And because of Iris, there existed cleaners. No, it was a necessity that every sovereign had even if they weren't Iris. People who would dirty their hands instead of the sovereign and people who would help their owner head towards their goal. And Iris looked at Han Su as he spoke. I was actually going to end by Aaron but. I will see first, he would need to use the cloud snack again in order to kill the carnivorous beast. But it didn't seem like much of a loss. Since it seems that a lot of things changed in a small moment. It's very cheap if it's just some runes and cloud snacks bed oh that the cloud snack was just something that worked on the normal runes anyway. It didn't work on the colorless runes so he couldn't use it for that long. Of course he didn't know how far he could trust Sang Jin. When the second tutorial begins then everyone here would be forcibly separated around the second tutorial area and they would not know when they would meet again. His mind might have changed by the time they meet again. But investments were always something like this. An investment of a few runes and eight cloud snacks in order to attain a chance of getting a decent punisher was a very good investment. Well. If it fails then there's nothing I can do about that, if that happened he could just follow his original plans. Han Su, after looking at Sang Jin who was going down, started to regenerate his health. Kududud Hansu cut off the carnivorous beast's life as he ruthlessly stabbed the needle into its heart. Kuhu. It let out a last cry as it fell down. He had went hunting and had already experienced him so he only needed to smoke six of them to kill it. The carnivorous beast didn't drop any runes as if it wasn't designed to be killed. The floor was littered with the runes of the guys who had died yesterday but Han Su didn't even take a glance at them as he started to walk towards a corner of the altar. The requirements of the hidden piece was simple in some ways. To kill the monster before it destroyed the altar and jumped out. For it to come out it needed to destroy the altar but in that instant the chance of attaining the hidden piece disappears. Which meant that if you wanted to kill him you needed to kill it inside the altar where his fears got amplified. It's seriously not something that was designed for somebody to kill, Han Su went into the room in the corner of the altar that Kuang Gunju had told him jokingly in the past. And in the middle of the room there was a single artifact. It's not a skill but. He wasn't that disappointed, if you were to compare an artifact and a skill of the same quality then the artifact was more useful despite his trait. If it was useful to a point. Let's see what they give, Han Su had a bit of anticipation as he walked to the middle of the pedestal. And Han Su's face, which did not get shocked easily, started to tremble at a minute level. Ring of the Vampire King Nirmaha. Solo ranking the strongest artifact which represented Kuang Gunju. Kuang Gunju this guy. I wondered where he had obtained this. Han Su sighed as he saw this. Chapter 22 
Sky Road, 1, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. The level of artifacts all differed. There were a lot of different bases to judge but the most important one was color. What kind of energy it can absorb. It could be an artifact that shows its full potential only if it uses the colorless energy in the colorless R or it could be an artifact that only shows its full potential if it uses the red area or energy of the blue area which came after the red area. Of course an artifact using a higher quality energy would be of a higher level so the level of the artifact changed with the color as the base. Colorless artifact, red artifact and so on. Once you separate them into these levels they are further split up into different levels. Unless it's an amazing artifact there was no way for it to be worth more than the artifact of a higher color. The high quality colorless artifacts were inferior to the low quality red artifacts. So even if you were somebody who flew around the area you were at you needed to slowly increase the standards of your artifact in the middle area and then go over. Since the weapons from the previous stage didn't really work very well in the next stage. But sometimes, very unique artifacts came out. Growing artifact. Their uniqueness was that they went through growth. Just like an adventurer absorbing runes and changing their tune from colorless to red and to orange, the artifact also absorbed something and improved its color. Not every growing artifact was expensive if it wasn't as good as other artifacts despite you investing a lot into and growing it then it was better to just find a decent weapon the middle stage before going to the next stage but of cause growing artifacts also had different levels. The child of a dragon would be stronger than others at the age of 1 and be stronger than others at the age of 10, this gap would only get larger as they grew up. The growing artifacts that improved like this and always stayed at the top were called it was sometimes called because it grew like a dragon, these were the strongest artifacts that even surpassed artifacts on higher levels of color. From number 1 to 999. 999 items that the Manoros clan, which were one of the nine pillars, had judged and chosen out with strictly, the strongest items of the ones found so far. It didn't care whether it was a ring, an armor, or a weapon. You put them in a line and then give them a number. From rank 1 to 9 were solo numbering. 10 to 9 9 was double numbering. 100 to 9 9 9 was triple numbering. These artifacts were usually famous by themselves but they would get even more famous depending on who used them. Because even if a weakling got lucky and obtained these, these would eventually fall into the hands of the strong. It was harder and more important to keep the artifacts of the other world than obtaining them. If you carry around an artifact too good for you then you lose both your life and the artifact. And solo numbering, was one of the strongest artifacts that got famous because of Kuang Gunju and something that had made him famous. Nicknamed, Absolute Ring. Kuang Gunju this guy. I wondered where he had obtained this. It was extremely hard to obtain but it wasn't that only one existed because it was a numbering series like how despite the strength of a dragon, there wasn't only one of them. And that was the reason when the people saw Kuang Gunju cause a massacre they tried to find the ring in a manner that would have flipped the other world upside down. Since the eight powers of the ring that came out when people were merely sketched by it turned them into rags and the high rankers weren't an exception to this but this thing that could not be found anywhere was actually found here. Well yeah. If only Kuang Gunju had cleared this mission it's correct that it's something that cannot be obtained anywhere else, the tutorial area couldn't be entered unless it was at this moment. There was a reason why the adventurers could not find it even if they wanted to. Very good, this place did not reward people because you cleared a hard objective. Since something that is hard to a weak person is easier than anything to somebody who is strong. The best rewards come out when a weak person clears an objective that seems impossible at that level. Just like the hidden piece where Han Su killed the carnivorous beast. He had expected something like this to an extent. That the artifact he gained here was not something that could be easily thrown out in any of the colored regions. But who would have expected a solo numbering to come out? As soon as Han Su put on the ring the ring shrunk to fit the size of Han Su's finger. A growing artifact that contained eight powers. It absorbed runes and growed, and every time it rose a level in color it would unlock another power. 
The current Nirmaha's ring was a colorless artifact and because of that there was only one power unlocked. But Han Su made a satisfied smile. This is it, the first power. It wasn't simply a dispel magic that got rid of skills. It was an ability that could nullify anything from passive skills to even an individual's trait. Of course it wasn't that the person who got smacked would become a traitless person and lose tons of mana. The other world wasn't such a easy place. Just because you obtained a godly sword did not mean that you could become a sword master and just because of an artifact a rabbit could not become a dragon nor a pig become a dragon. And even if such things existed, these things won't land in the lands of a rabbit or a pig. And even if it did land in their lands they won't be able to use it because of limitations and even if they could use it, they won't be able to protect it. To use it one needed to match the other person's trait or when they use the trait and every time you used it it will cost mana, also the destroyed power will eventually come back. But the fact that you could cancel the enemy's powers at the right time and in the right place was a huge advantage. Since by the, the time their powers come back, they would have become a corpse. It wasn't just a draconic series. It was called so because it was already amazing at the colorless stage. And this was a growing artifact, this was just the start. It seems like I will need a lot of runes from now on. Though I cannot use it properly yet, Hansu touched his ears. Kong Hansu, Strength. 92.3 Stamina. 88.8 .8 Agility. 47.1 Perception. 50.2 Mana. 22 Magic Resistance. 13 Though it was in its weakest state it was still a colorless artifact to use this thing properly, one's runes needed to be at the colorless stage. You needed at least one colorless rune and it was better if they were all colorless. But the current him did not have any colorless rune. Hansu pondered for a moment. To either make a colorless rune first or focus on achieving balance. There was 8 cloud snacks left. Cloud Snack did not work at the colorless rune stage. Hansu, who was pondering, made a decision. Make one colorless rune first and then achieve balance, if it's an enemy where he needed to use the colorless rune as well as the Nirmaha's ring, it would be hard to beat him while his balance was off. And on the other hand if the enemy did not require him to use the Nirmaha's ring then the colorless rune wouldn't be needed as well. Hansu, who had made his decision, started to walk out of the altar slowly. Not bad, Hansu mumbled as he looked at his stat screen on the seventh day. Kong Hansu, Strength, Colorless. 0.01% Stamina. 88.8 .8 Agility. 84.0 Perception. 85.1 Mana. 58.4 Magic Resistance. 13 The strength had remained stationary at 0.01% he had decided that it was good to make one colorless rune in case of an emergency and made it but he could not raise it any further. Once it turned into a colorless rune then it would only increase after taking colorless runes. This was the same for Nirmaha's ring. Since the colorless rune did not come out on the first tutorial area, he needed to obtain them from the second tutorial area from now on. Since in the colorless area, which was the basis for the second tutorial area, both colorless rune and normal runes came out in a good mix. Since both strength and stamina were in demand, Hansu invested by trading all his remaining strength and stamina runes into agility, perception, and mana runes. Mana wasn't needed for Hansu who did not have a single skill but in order to use the power destruction freely it was better to have more mana. It was a win.win for everybody. Since agility, Perception or mana runes could be traded for a higher price than strength or stamina so people who luckily found these runes quickly brought them to Hansu and then raised their strength and stamina at a very fast rate. If Hansu hunted alone then he would have never been able to make this balance in time. Well. I couldn't finish all the missions because he had focused his time on hunting he could not finish all the missions but this did not matter much. Since he had obtained something more valuable than that. Taking everything wasn't the important part. You just needed to take the core factors that will keep you above everyone else as you go up. Most people thought runes were important but runes weren't always the core factors of strength. 
Beasts were everywhere so runes could be attained anywhere and since runes were fair to everybody it was hard to make a difference between others. Runes were important but the quality trait, skills and artifacts whose strength got multiplied by runes were more important. Runes would get stacked even if you just kill beasts weaker than you. But the three factors above wasn't like that. Rare things were limited and because of that gaps would be created. Six cloud snacks are left. I filled the food pouch with goblin jerky. The needle has been sharpened well too. Hansu checked the people afar as he checked his belongings. Though they had gone through a lot in a week, it felt short to some people and long to some people to the point their eyes have changed while some others were still struggling about. And in the middle of those people he could see me he and Sangjin but he did not make any gestures to get their attention. Since they will get separated soon. Well. Let's greet each other with smiles when he meet again a fairy appeared through the rip in the air above Hansu who was checking this and that. Everyone. You've worked hard for a week. You've probably guessed it by now but there are many people like you outside. Dot. You will now start the second tutorial. The place you guys will live on from now is. Dot away up towards the sky huh it didn't matter where they went. The thing they were curious about was something else. How many will live there? The fairy smiled at this. A little bit over 10,000 I think. You will be there for three months. Dot. It will be much more fun when you get there. It was hard until now playing with only a hundred people right? How fun would it be playing with 10,000 people? You will make a lot of friends too. Isn't it fun just thinking about it? Everyone's face crumpled at the fairy's words. Even a hundred was this tiring, but 10,000 at least. And there was a lot of unprecedented things in this one week. They couldn't even imagine how many things the fairy would do in that three months. The fairy spoke after watching that scene happily. There's exactly 10842, you will start with around 10 to 11 people, everyone started mumbling about and then quickly started to group with close friends. Of course 11 was better than 10. And the stronger the people, the better it was. The strongest and most trustworthy 10 had to group. Miss me he. Take me please. Sang Jean. I'm pretty useful man. Take me. This bitch. You ignored us until now. Get lost. The fairy laughed at the chaos below. Ahahaha. You don't need to be like that. Dot. It'll be random. Work hard everyone. And as soon as those words ended, the remaining 47 were all warped from the first tutorial area. To one of the random starting areas of the second tutorial area, Sky Road. Translators note as everybody can see 47 does not divide evenly in 10s and 11s, this is because the group of 10 and 11 are pulled from multiple tutorial areas and not just theirs. So 10 and 11 out of 10,842. There are a lot of combinations of 10s and 11s but I guess the easiest is having two groups of 11 and 1082 groups of 10s right. Math Major's thoughts at its finest Kabatochan's note instead of doing some maths, you should translate more. Dot by the way guys, starting with this chapter, there's no need to try asking us for Ross as you have to go through a paywall in the original site, Munpia. And also, you can't MTL as Munpia upload text under flash form, so you can't copy the text at all. A donation would be truly grateful also for the hard dot working staff. Thank you. P.S. Sorry for the mess, got the order of the chapters crossed XD. Chapter 23. Sky Road, 2, you are listening at novel full.audio. Hugh de Duke. Hansu rose out of his seat and looked around. Those evil things why would the fairy leave friendly and strong people together in a group for them be in joy? In the small white room, ten people were looking around. And they were actually rather calm and composed about it and weren't shocked. Just like how people who went through the first tutorial should be like. Be cautious of your surroundings but do not make it obvious. But then one of these people grumbled. God damn it. 
There's only 10 inch and everyone made a slightly unsatisfied expression as if they agreed. They were dropped in an unknown place. They didn't know each other but if they were going to be in harsh conditions wasn't it obvious that having 11 was better than 10. The man who complained before talked. Well. Let's at least introduce ourselves. Since we will probably be working toge. Before the man finished talking, the fairy's voice came out from thin air in the room they were at. And as soon as the fairy's voice came out, everyone didn't say what they were going to and instead focused on the fairy. Dot. Everyone made a confused expression at the fairy's words. Dot. Everyone made a sigh of relief. Their room had ten. If they were going to balance the numbers then they would probably kill off one person in one of the rooms with eleven people and then start. And if that happened they might get injured during the fight and even if they managed to kill somebody off without getting injured then they would be cautious of each other. But the fairy crushed everybody's expectations. Fucking bitch of a fly. I wondered why it was moving things along so smoothly, one person spat out curses while everyone who had been sighing in relief started to be cautious of everyone else. And at the same time they looked for the person who was likely to be the weakest to of all. There probably won't be anybody who they can easily. If they searched then they might find some but most of them had already been dropped off at the first tutorial area. The people here were people who would not die alone they would at least stab them back before they die. And because of this, it was important to find the weakest person to attack with the nine and kill them instantly. Dachel, who was the first to curse, mumbled inwardly. Fuck. There's no way to know since you can't judge from appearances if they were all normal existences then you could judge very simply from their appearance. Since females were generally weaker. But if you went on like this in this place your neck will fly off. Since if they had collected runes zealously because they were weaker, crushing any decent male was possible. Because of this Dachel instead searched for the existence of weapons. Since if they didn't have a weapon, they would be the weakest. The one without a weapon. Damn. They all have it. Dachel mumbled. Everyone was gripping intensely onto their well-sharpened blade that was shining in the light. But in this situation, one person was out of the ordinary. Dot who's that guy holding the needle on the waist of the guy standing leisurely in the corner there was a long needle. Is he crazy? Dachel swirled his tongue. That thing was sharp but from one look one could see that it was harder to use than a blade with a sharp edge. And unless that guy was at the level of a fencing athlete there's no way he would pick such a weapon. But he couldn't act carelessly. Because if he acted with just that as the basis, the chances of danger was too great. At that moment a female in the corner looked around as she spoke. Aren't we going to act together from now? Let's try to appeal each other. To show each other how much they're worth everyone started to nod at those words. Since it was still very pressuring to act if they think somebody looked weak. Because they might be the only one thinking like that. And if they're unlucky and get into a one-on-one -on -one then things become even more of a headache. But on the other hand, if they were to talk things out in a circle like this, they can somewhat judge. As to who was the most useless one here. Since they were going to act together from now, it was better if they were stronger or have a unique ability. But on the other hand, if they didn't have such merits then they were useless. Then the nine could just kill them. And if that happened then they probably won't get injured. Dachel pondered for a moment then raised his sword. It was a little regrettable to show his hidden card but if he hit it and then get ganged upon because he seemed weak then he would just die. I'm called Dachel, I'm not sure if you've seen something like this. And then a humming sound came out of his hands as a shining energy started to flow off from the sword on his hands. And Hansu's eyes shone as he saw this. Reinforce, there was a very unique skill among the runes. If you learned it then you could raise all your other stats while using your mana. This was called reinforce. The user would continuously use mana while raising the other stats for a set duration. And a few better ones of those people could infuse mana into weapons like that which increases durability and sharpness. 
Well, the reinforced rune that could be attained in the tutorial area wasn't that good in terms of efficiency but it was better having it than not. Since it raised the battle power as a whole. Reinforce was part of the runes that were very useful and high priced even out of the numerous skill runes. The people who had seen this looked around cautiously as they fought each other in words in order to appeal to others. I can heal with just that huh? I can. They argued as they talked back and forth but since it was a problem with their lives on the stake so the atmosphere turned darker. If they lost in this dumb show-off competition then it meant death. But Dachel made an expression of leisure. It's definitely not me it seemed that he wasn't the strongest. But the skill he had, reinforce, was better than anybody else's. As long as he wasn't last place. And at the same time their eyes collected on two people. It was Han Su and the girl who first suggested to appeal themselves. Dachel made a leisurely smile as he spoke. I don't think the lady over there has spoken yet, then the girl stared at Dachel as she spoke with a laugh. I'm called Jimin. What I'm good at that I will show you now, then the girl stood up and started to head towards Dachel. Dachel's caution exploded as he saw the girl move towards him suddenly. Usually it was a walk that would make his heart beat but his heart rate increased for a different reason at this moment. What are you doing? Don't come close. I said I'll show you what I'm good at. And then the girl pulled out a dagger from her inner thigh. A blackish dagger that did not look normal. Dachel spat out curses. Fuck. Are you all just gonna watch? This is just a crazy bitch. But everyone just pretended to listen. It seemed like that would start fighting each other, why would they butt in? It didn't matter who died out of the two and even if one did not die, injury was sure to happen so they could just finish them off after. Dachel, who was looking at this, crumpled his face as he rose the power of the skill he attained, to the max. The 27 mana that was surrounding his body started get converted quickly into Dachel's stats. The strength that was around 45 rose to 50. Not only stamina, agility, perception were raised but even magic power, physical and magical resistances also rose. One of the advantages of reinforce, it raised the stats of resistances which were hard to obtain in the start. Dachel even added mana onto his sword and swung down with his raised stat. Kuduk, ha. Huh? Dachel, who had seen the female disappear right in front of his eyes, searched for her in a hurry but then looked towards his chest as he felt a warm sensation surge out from the area of his heart and in that area the girl had already stabbed the dagger in her hand onto where his heart was. The girl looked at Dachel as she whispered. I'll use the skill well. It seemed like that your skill seemed the best out of these. And even so to the point where it didn't fit your level, and at those words Dachel realized why she asked them to appeal themselves. Fuck. Dachel fell soon afterwards and Jimin smiled as she saw the numerous runes and the one skill rune drop from his body like corn. My luck is good. It didn't seem like they dropped on a 100% chance. I will take the skill. Ah yes, we should share the stat. If you monopolize then you will get sick. Jimin only took the skill rune she wanted and the rest shook their heads while they picked up the runes on the ground. Crazy bitch. What did she go through in this one week? At least go crazy nicely, Hanchel, a man who had been watching the girl, clicked his tongue. It wasn't that he didn't have to confidence to win. But it'll be tiring if that crazy bitch charged at him because of a few words so he decided to shut his mouth. And it seemed like a few others had the same thought as him. But the fact that that Dachel died wasn't really unjustified. Since he had a skill that was too good for his level. The skill reinforced did really look good. But it needed to be used by someone who could use it well. Even if Jimin didn't kill him, one of the others would've. Killing the weak wasn't the answer. If they killed randomly with no reason then they would attain hostility and die but in a situation like this where a reason existed, it was basically acting like a thankful cleaner. It was best if you could kill somebody strong when there was a reason to if you can kill them. Since if you had to kill somebody anyway, it was best to kill somebody who would spew out the most. 
Jimin had lowered them into nine and didn't want to struggle anymore so she sat in the corner. And soon a voice came out of the air again. Sky Road. The road to the sky. Crazy bitch. Bitch. Curses were mumbled out from the surroundings. The fairy's voice continued in the air as if it didn't hear those sounds. Sky Road. A road where you had to go from the 1,000 starting points and head towards the topmost single area. There wasn't only one path. It was a setup where you would get split up and collide into the people from other starting points. Though there was something very unique about it. And then a large amount of light and wind started to pour in from the outside. What is this? Everyone made a ridiculous expression as they looked at the outside. The room they were at was currently floating high up in the sky. A scene that would turn make an acrophobiac shrivel up. A vast sea could be seen thousands of meters below and in the distance outside the white room a large floating island that seemed much larger than Yuido. There was a long bridge connecting their room and the island. A few other rooms just like theirs were also connected to the island and there were many other islands floating about the same height as theirs. And the thousands of islands that were floating above them in layers. The people cried out in gloom as they saw the islands that looked like stairs but too far apart to be called stairs. It's been a while Hansu mumbled as he saw the stairs of islands in his view. Move by moving between the islands floating in the air. And continue to climb higher and higher. Every island had rewards you could attain and had special rules or beasts. And there's also a trap the thing Hansu needed to do on Sky Road was simple. He needed to prepare as much as he can in order to pass the final parts of the dungeon. Asterisk Dungeon Mentioned in Chapter 3, he needed to find every hidden piece and important factors as he climbed the Sky Road. And the most important thing on the first level of the Stairway Island was one thing. He didn't care about the other things but this was a necessity. First I need to attain, as Hansu set his goal and started to move out, everybody cautiously moved along the bridge. The width of the bridge was short but it wasn't dangerous because there were side rails. And while they were doing so, Hanchel spoke to maybe lighten up the mood. Well. At least it feels good, it's like an adventure. Let's do well together. If we don't go crazy and move cautiously and slowly. Kugugugu before Hanchel's words were finished, a faint tremble was felt from the island. While everyone got shocked and grabbed onto the side rails, a fairy's voice was heard from above them. Bitch dot like fly, curses came out of Hanchel's mouth as he could not keep calm anymore. Translators note yes I do read all of the comments, every single one of them on Reddit as well as the one of this site. Thank you all for the support and I'll try my best to translate enough so you guys can get one on weekdays and two on weekends Kabato-chan's Nodek Dud is a good slave I swear. But if he translated instead of reading all the comments, I'm sure he'd be even able to translate two on weekdays. Whip whip work slave, work. Chapter 24 Sky Road, 3, you are listening at novelfull.audio. As soon as the people got to the land, the bridge got destroyed. As the people saw the bridge fall down to what seemed like an endless amount of time, they made a horrified face. If they can't climb up fast enough, then they would fall along with this island. Well. The explanations were done earlier so let's decide what to do from. Since it looked like they were all from different tutorial areas and were strangers, Hanchel started his story. But before he could finish his words, somebody started moving. Dot needle. The guy with the needle started to walk towards the suspicious-looking jungle hesitantly. Hanchel shouted as he looked at Hansu. Hello there. Do you know where to go? Hansu shrugged his shoulders. It's a straight line so you just need to go in a straight line. What's there to think about, the rest who had seen this made a helpless expression. Of course there indeed existed a path through the center of the jungle. An extremely suspicious looking and dangerous looking path where something might pop out. What is this guy, but he didn't seem like someone lame. As long as he wasn't somebody who treated their lives like flipping a coin, acting like that meant he had confidence. 
and at that moment a rumbling sound was heard as the outskirts of the island started to break off. The exact area that the bridge was attached to just until now. Dot fucking hell. It meant that it will not let them rest even for a moment. The people spat out curses as they followed Hansu. It was a straight path anyway, there was no other paths. It somehow feels like I became a lackey, Hanchel didn't really feel comfortable but he decided to leave him alone because his ruthless attitude was rather burdensome. I'll know once I peel him. Either he's a faker or has something, Hanchel mumbled as he followed him. Let's see. With the central dormant volcano as the center of direction. The eighth room on the left of the lava river, so turn rightwards twice and once left. The he needed to obtain was a mutant of and the place he needed to find for this. The structure of all 100 of the first level of the stair islands was the same. Ten white rooms with the dormant volcano as the center and forked roads that connected 498 beast habitats and everything else. So as long as you follow the path as you memorized then you could find the forest. And as soon as the fork on the road appeared, Hansu smoothly turned right. Well it's actually the same no matter where you go, the danger was similar no matter which path you took and eventually you will end up on the center where you can move to a different island. If he wasn't going to find the habitat for the rune pattern snake then he would have just gone in any direction. Hanchel, who had seen this, asked in confusion. Wait. You said you were just going in a straight line before. Do you perhaps know something else? Hanchel asked as he looked at Hansu who was continuously walking off. He had tested earlier. To see if he could move to the other roads on the side. But the creator of this island seemed to want them to only move on the path so they could not walk outside. Which meant they had to go straight. Which made sense until now when he decided to go right in a fork on the road like this without hesitating. Hansu looked at Hanchel and then spoke. I have a psychic power. What? What was this nonsense? Everyone who had been following made groans. They thought he had some sort of navigating skill because he was walking so confidently. But to think that he had no plans. What nonsense is this? What are you thinking? Han Su sighed as he spoke. You just need to go that way so why are you acting like homing missiles? Dot. Fuck. He's right. After hearing him for a while, he didn't know why he was following that guy like that. It seems like that the girl called Jimin and everyone else wasn't weak but were following his guy without saying anything. My pride suddenly feels damaged. Do I take it? Hanchel shook his head. It was obvious that if one person moved confidently while others were hesitant that everyone would want to follow that guy. And more so if the island behind them was getting destroyed one by one. Sure. We'll go as you say, it'll be the same no matter which way they go. Since that bloody fairy wouldn't have made some parts of the island easier than others. Hanchel checked the people in the group. First, there is a self-proclaimed psychic and a crazy bitch everyone seemed normal but there was somebody else that stood out. First the person with the healing skill. From his walk and the fact that he had the healing skill, it seemed like his stats were good. And the sword that was shining around his waist didn't look normal either. He probably wouldn't attach something to dangle on his waist if he wasn't going to use it. If this were a game he felt like a priest, no, it was more like a paladin. The rest seemed normal but were even more unique. A couple and three daughters whom seemed around twenty. Halchel mumbled after seeing this. Ha. Huh. People come rather well bunched. Thought it was random. They got separated on the first area on random. What are the chances of the family over there coming together? But Han Su knew the reason. Since it's more fun this way, there's no other reason. This was it. They split up relationships created from understandings but left the relationships created from affection. Since bringing them like had higher chances of created more interesting situations. Well. That's just how they wanted, Han Su, who had stopped his thoughts, stopped walking as he stopped in front of a weird-looking tree next to the road. 
Han Su pulled out a cookery instead of the needle that he had on his waist, cut a bit of the wood and then started to chew on it. What are you doing? If you chew on this it gives a slight effect of neutralizing the poison, why do you need to neutralize the poison? And then Han Su slightly pulled on Hanchel's neck. Kududuk, dot. In an instant a 3M long snake that stretched down from the trees bit the spot where Hanchel was standing. That was dangerous Hanchel got flustered at an extreme speed. Han Su chuckled at this. The one just now was this fast because it was an agility pattern so as long as you are careful of ambushes then it wasn't that bad. Rune Pattern Snake a unique beast that gained extra stats depending on the pattern on its skin. The annoying part was that the patterns kept changing. And if there are mana rune patterns on its body one also needed to be careful of the poison. Once you get bitten while it had mana runes up then you will be poisoned with a toxin that will steadily burn your own mana. And whilst the mana burned, your magic power as well as health were also affected. Of course it didn't burn until you died and the effects will disappear after some time but by the time the effects disappear, you will have become quite a mess. The bark of the oak tree which it lived in had some sort of antidote dot like effect due to it being rubbed against its scales but it was best to just not get bitten by it at all. Han Su chewed on the oak bark as he spoke. Always be careful of being bit while it has mana runes up and attack when it doesn't have agility runes up. You can dodge the agility runes if you are careful of ambushes but it will still be hard to catch. How did you know all th? Psychic powers, dot. Han Su, who had completed his talk, went into the jungle and everyone else stared at each other but followed him in with frowns as they felt the vibrations behind them into the jungle where the snakes were. Kududuk, goddammit. Hanchel grinded his teeth at the snake which did not die even after getting hit by his sword and had bit into his flesh. It wasn't that bad because it didn't have mana runes up but he had failed to kill it within one shot because it had physical resistance runes up. Such difficult beasts. They were so strong that his body was full of scars from being bit from these guys despite having been in here for only a while. And the way their runes changed was random. If it changed according to how the snakes wanted or needed then they could at least see it coming but it was very dangerous due to the random changes that happened at random times. He had thought that he could kill this snake instantly just now because it had strength runes up but then it instantly changed to physical resistance rune, resisted his attack and bit into his flesh. His flesh didn't get bit off because it wasn't a strength rune pattern but the spikes that were attached around the snake had turned his flesh into rags. Damn. There isn't time to regenerate much either since he had some stamina runes he needed time to regenerate but he constantly heard the damnable island crumble behind him so he did not have the leisure to rest to recover before moving on. But there was a bigger problem than the snakes. God damn it. Why aren't you guys fighting? Not only five of the nine had been fighting. The four in the back were just idling about. Well they weren't idling to be exact. Since the guy that looked like the head of the family stood at the back as he slashed off the snakes that flew towards his wife and his daughters. The man hardened his face at Hanchel's rage. I'm sorry. Please understand. I must protect my family, damn it. Family means a free pass. Then what would happen to the guys fighting in the front? This was a difficulty meant for nine people. The fairy had set the difficulty like this from the start. But because four people were doing nothing the others were struggling. If that guy called Han Su wasn't flying around next to them they would have already died. Okay. He could understand the family man but why was the guy with the heel, who was holding a sword, wasn't fighting too? Hey. Why aren't you fighting? He did not understand. If he had a healing skill then shouldn't he fight even more aggressively? And then Kong Min, the guy holding the sword, chuckled as he spoke. I don't think I really need to fight. I'll just heal you guys. Dot. Hansu's rage skyrocketed. This Yankee, then why are you holding on to a sword? Hanchel started to calm down his mind. This wasn't the right time to be fighting. Yeah. Let's think of him as a healer. A healer. Aren't there healers in games? 
but Hanchel had to curse at Conmin's words that came out afterwards. By the way in order to receive heals from me then you must bring runes. To heal all the injuries on you I will take 3 strength runes or 1.5 agility or 1 mana rune. This motherfucker. Hanchel grinded his teeth. Was this something a person doing a team play should be saying? Which means he, who was fighting in the front, should also receive runes. He wasn't fighting in the front because he wanted to. That was not normal. From what it seemed from the way he acted, the amount of runes he had wasn't low. He was probably good at fighting. And it would be even harder to beat him once he fought while healing himself. But then to not fight despite having so much battle powers. Is this bitch not fighting because then we will get hurt more. Since if you set your mind to earn runes from healing, that was the easiest method. It might be an over-exaggeration but there was a high possibility. Kong Min had heard himself being cursed but he laughed as he spoke. But shouldn't you fight more zealously? I think I can hear the island slowly crumble from behind. God damn it. Hanchel grinded his teeth. That he had fallen into a very nasty situation. Regeneration was a necessity. But he had already been injured even though it was just the beginning. If he didn't heal this then his battle powers will fall and the speed at which he got stronger will slow down because the rate at which he gained runes will also drop. And if you take into account of the fact that stronger beasts will continue to come out then healing was really a necessity. If that guy was asking for excessive prices that he would have just killed him. It won't be easy but if he were to continue then he didn't know how to deal with him once he got stronger than him and continue to treat him like this. But sadly the amount he offered was a very reasonable price for healing. It was a perfect amount where he will still profit by not attacking but didn't ask for too much. And to continue the relationship where they profited from each other. But this wasn't a situation to make profit of each other but rather a situation where they needed to combine their strengths. That guy was holding on to the dangerous situation as if it was a chance but this meant their lives will get harder. Since as long as he took things they will lose something. Bitch. The healer is all that ha, huh, he wanted to just sit and stoutly declare that he wasn't gonna do it but he knew that was a crazy act as he saw the island and road slowly fall bit by bit far behind him. As he saw it, this guy had understood his worth in that instant and laid down these calculations. Or he had done something like this in the first tutorial area as well. He had somewhat of an idea how this Yankee had gained runes and gotten strong. He probably wouldn't heal you because you threaten or torture him. Since if he was somebody who will do that then he would have become a mess during the first tutorial area and would not have had the time to negotiate like this. Fuck. It wasn't that his skill rune will drop with a 100% chance even if you killed him. And the worth of the healing skill was too high to bet like that and especially in a time-limited situation like this. Are you just gonna leave that alone? As Hanchel talked to Han Su whilst grinding his teeth, Han Su just shrugged his shoulder. He didn't particularly intrude even if they fought or didn't fight. Since it will all eventually return to him. Here are some runes. Please heal my wife, as he saw the family man hand over the rune he gathered and asked to heal his wife who was slightly injured, Hanchel grinded his teeth. It would usually be a very warming view but Hanchel's situation was too dire to look at it in such a way. The others also stared at the four coldly as if it wasn't just Hanchel's thoughts that were like this. A shit hand. I pulled a real shit hand, he had thought that the psychic guy was the weirdest one but it seemed that he was the best hand he had now. A crazy bitch. A heel seller and three harmonious family members. Hanchel's face expression turned cold. And at that moment a voice flowed into Hanchel's head. Hanchel answered as if this was all normal. I don't know. If these guys are worthy enough to take, Hanchel ended the conversation as he thought of it only and did not send it as a message and then grinded his teeth. Hanchel, who had finished the conversation with his friend and leader Hyun Jin, started to walk as if nothing happened. He had thought that he was criticizing Han Su but Hanchel believed in the existence of psychic powers. Since he had already seen somebody with such an ability like his friend, 
Hyunjin, and even benefited like this. But there was a guy watching Hanchul. It seems like there's already somebody who had bloomed the sovereign's trait it's rather quick, trait a trait which Iris and Kwang Gunju had. A trait which made them into a leader and the leader becoming a trait, a trait that made somebody into a. Han Su showed a conspicuous color as he looked at the small symbol that appeared for a moment and then disappeared on the back of Hanchel's hand. Chapter 25 Sky Road, 4, you are listening at Novel Full Audio. While Han Su was making such thoughts and advancing forward, one person cautiously spoke as they looked at their surroundings. Dot, it seems like the number of snakes are decreasing. Everyone nodded at these words. It was something they had felt for a while. Thankfully their speed of movement had increased and they had made quite a distance from the part of the island that was crumbling. Good, Han Su nodded his head inwardly. Since the lack of rune pattern snakes meant he had almost reached the habitat of the rune eater snake. As soon as the snakes had disappeared they looked at each other while catching a breath. Their entire bodies had been healed cleanly. Since Kong Min's healing was rather effective despite the disputes. Kong Min looked at Han Su with a mysterious expression. He didn't receive any heals. There was no way to not get injured no matter how strong you were. And the only reason why he had been able to survive was because he had put himself in such situations. And Han Su was like that too. Injuries all over the body. But there was a clear difference with Han Su. Just how much stamina does he have, Kong Min rolled around his tongue. It wasn't fast enough to see with the eyes but his injuries were often gone while they were walking. He had thought that he had mistook what he had seen at first. And he had been dodging all the big injuries that would be of harm during a fight. He wasn't sure because he didn't look close but he could guess somewhat. He had made sure to not get injured on his joints and muscles and if he was going to get bit then he made it so the parts of the body that wouldn't hinder him was bit. Even if his skin were to be all scratched off. It would hurt much less to get bit around the thigh or buttocks but he had been dodging injuries in important areas as if every part which helped him fight was precious. And he had been doing so by getting hit all over the body whilst dodging fatal wounds and healing himself with his high stamina. At once glance he looked like a normal college student but he was fighting like a beast. As if he was fighting by squeezing every bit power out of his entire body. Dot is he like a mercenary or something. The skin would hurt a lot but it healed fast so it was the right choice. But this choice would be hard for a normal person to make but that guy was not afraid of getting hurt. No, he had even shown that if he could kill the enemy by getting hurt, then he chose to do so. It seems like the sales won't be that good, Kong Min frowned slightly. Amazing was amazing and obstruction was an obstruction. If that guy didn't exist then the others would have been hurt more but due to him fighting so well he had to set the price of healing low. Since if there was no demand, the prices will drop. But at that moment, something appeared in front of Kong Min whom had been thinking of this and that, what is that? A humongous tree that couldn't even be compared to the trees until now had appeared in front of them. And the surroundings trees had been broken and smashed to create an open area. While everybody was cautiously looking at their surroundings in this new area that was a bit off the road, Han Su was looking at the top of the tree. There it is. A giant snake of 15 m that had coiled upon the tree. It had become the leader of the rune pattern snakes by eating them and absorbing their runes. Most mutant rune eater snakes became strong like that and acted as predators. A monster that couldn't even distinguish its own clansmen and only saw them as food. And because of this, other rune pattern snakes did not live around it. But that one is useless that one was useless. Since due to its size, if you gave it three runes it will eat all of those three. It was only useful while it was a baby, when it did not eat much and would puke out two when you gave it three would it be useful. But since it was only useful for three months, he just needed to release it after that. Han Su nodded as he thought of the rune pattern snake's egg somewhere within the tree. Let's go, he had fought in the most dangerous areas for 50 years and had never encountered an enemy who he could leisurely dodge and whom would send only so.so attacks at him. Foresee the enemy's movements. 
there were much more enemies that moved faster than one could foresee. And because of this the fighting style of giving flesh and hitting bone had been deep embedded in him. Since as long as you kill the enemy, regeneration was possible. But his tactic was only possible when you could receive their attacks to a degree but due to his resistances being rock bottom low, it felt like he was fighting with chains all over his body. And he seemed strong right now but later enemies who know how to use skills and their traits properly will appear. He had a bit of an advantage in stats and artifacts but there was a huge gap in battle powers that came from skills and traits. Since that girl called Jimin had already grasped her fighting style a bit. He had to take the advantage before he could earn skills and to do that a rune eater snake was a necessity. If I take this then everything becomes easy the family man, Jukiel, cautiously spoke as he saw Han Su warm up his body. Do you really have to fight that thing? Hmm, isn't that something you don't really need to kill? Han Su nodded at those words. The rune eater snake was too high of a difficulty for people who came out of one week of the tutorial. And that snake which ate three and spat out two was a scam to others who needed the strength, stamina, agility, and perception runes. And because of this he had diverged from the path a little bit. Since there weren't any snakes here so as long as you were careful you wouldn't run into rune eater snakes or rune pattern snakes. The others who had already seen this stood far away as they looked at the tree with worrying expressions. You don't have to fight. I'll fight it alone so go over there where it's safe. Or you can go first, Jukiel shook his head at those words. No. I'm saying let's go together, Jukiel almost spat out something he had been thinking for a while. How would we advance if you die, Jukiel knew. That the reason why it was okay for him to just protect his wife at the back was because Han Su, who was in the front, was fighting well. He knew. That if you don't fight yourself here then you will eventually die. But even though he knew this in his head, how could he send his wife and daughter out after seeing them bleed after getting slashed by swords? There might be a chance that a place where his family could be safe might appear if they continue like this. And for that he needed to live a little bit longer. And because of that I must go with that person, if that guy dies then he would need to step out and fight. Because if he doesn't then the defense line will crumble and they would all die. But then if he died like that, who would protect his family? He wasn't in the situation to put up with danger. And isn't it very greedy to try to kill that snake which you don't need to, to the point of soloing? Jukio, who couldn't spit out such words, tried his best to make a pleasant smile as he spoke. What would happen if you died fighting that thing? It looked dangerous at a glance, let's just continue and not waste your strength on that thing. Shouldn't we continue forward while the gap is still large? Everyone looked at Han Su and Jukiel at those words. Chapter 26 Ticket, 1, you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Han Su chuckled at those words as he shook his head. I'll refuse. Go ahead first, Jukiel couldn't hold it in as he raged. Aren't you being too much young friend? And this isn't just my thoughts. We need to move together as nine but what do you want us to do if you enter a dangerous place like this? Jukiel's face was on fire as he spat out the words. Since he knew that it wasn't something he should be saying. But he held it in. The thing he had realized as he gained age and as he became a man of the family was that embarrassment was just for that moment and being loud was rather effective. Who would protect his family if he lets Han Su go because of his ego and then die afterwards? His wife and his daughters could not even threaten a fish. They will probably die as soon as he dies. Or something even worse. It's better to get cursed at and there was still a problem if he beat the snake. Since it can only take a long time for him to fight the snake. Since then the destruction line that they had created a gap from would catch up them. And if that happened they had to fight more anxiously. You dot as long as you come with us and fight then won't be any problem, didn't they do good until now. This wasn't a game, this wasn't the time to worry about killing a strong monster for items or runes but why was he going crazy just because he couldn't fight that powerful looking snake. They were already busy trying to push ahead. Damn. 
It's not because he's young. He's just crazy. Han Su clicking his tongue as he looked at that Jukio. There were times like this where their opinions crossed. And he understood as well. If a man wasn't selfish during times of danger then when would he be selfish? But there's no other way since their goals were different there was no other way. Han Su shook his head as he walked towards the snake. God damn it. If you were going to act selfishly like that then why are you traveling with us in the first place? Han Su shrugged his shoulders at Jukio's words as he spoke. I never traveled with you. The way we were going was the same, dot. Dot damn it, at that moment everybody realized that even though Han Su had been fighting in the front, he had never traded anything with them. Though he had taught them a few things discreetly. Jukio, who couldn't hold it anymore, cursed out loud while his wife and daughter looked at Jukio with a pitiful expression and him took him away after looking at Han Su with a resentful face. They knew that they were alive because of Han Su but they were sad because of Han Su acting the way he wanted. While they were leaving, somebody was watching Han Su with a regrettable face. The one who actually stimulated Jukio was Hanchel. He was going to try recruiting him after watching for a little bit longer but he was shocked because Han Su had said he was going to fight the snake. It did indeed seem like something amazing will come out if that snake was killed. But that was only important while they were alive. They had no thoughts of fighting with that anaconda dot like 15 m long snake. If Han Su had miraculous powers to the point where he could slice it in half then they might have followed him meticulously to gain a little bit of anything. But they had eyes too. The snake which was sliding between the trees was quite nimble despite its size and its size broke the branches that were as big as normal tree trunks which showed his strength. That was not something where they can gain anything out of while Han Su was fighting it alone. And they wanted to get away as fast as possible because of these thoughts. Since it will be bad if they received collateral damage whilst watching Han Su fight. They had no thoughts of getting dragged in. Well. There's nothing that can be done, if somebody couldn't keep their lives intact then that was all they were worth. The eight others quickly left Han Su and took off as Han Su bit onto a cloud snack while chucking at this view. Then he charged at the rune eater snake. Kududuk, who? Han Su took out the cloud snack he was biting on and then grasped the rune eater snake with both hands. And behind him a giant rune eater snake was laid out dead with its brain pierced through. Now there's only five cloud snacks left rune eater snake was indeed strong. But it was much weaker than the carnivorous beast. And his stats were much more different from then. He had used colorless energy and used the cloud snack because of limited time but only one was needed kachak and soon the egg cracked open as a small snake that couldn't be imagined to be a baby of that giant snake came out and crawled above Hansu's wrist. Good, there were quite a bit of strength, stamina, agility and perception runes gathered on his wrist. These were stats that Hansu judged to be not necessary for the moment. Hansu started to feed the baby rune eater snake with all the runes he had gathered up. The rune eater snake didn't realize its parent was dead as it greedily gulped down the runes on Hansu's wrist. The four types of runes on his wrist quickly disappeared as a different type of rune replaced their spots. First, raise magic, physical, and magic resistances. His mana wasn't really lacking. He had and instead raised these other three stats in order to raise his ability battle powers which were lacking. Since soon things with abilities will pop out one by one. Kong Han Su, Strength, Colorless. 0.02% Stamina. 88.8 .8 Agility. 84.0 Perception. 85.1 Mana. 58.4 Magic. 30 Physical Resistance. 25 Magic Resistance 25.3 Finally I've gained the 8 great stats the most basic and the stat that impacted the battle powers the most, the 8 great stats. From now he had to keep raising these stats in balance. Kiik The Rune Eater Snake which seemed to be content from eating its fill cried out in content as it fell asleep on his wrist it was indeed the offspring of that giant Rune Eater Snake no matter how you looked at it. 
he wouldn't bat an eye during normal battles. You just stay asleep, Han Su, who had been looking at it cutely, started to walk fast as he saw the destruction line closing in. Dad. What do we do? Be quiet please, while Jukiel and his family were left behind on a fork on a road and were struggling, somebody started to appear afar. Jukiel nodded after seeing this. I knew this would happen, he was covered in blood but it was Han Su. Jukiel, who had been looking at Han Su, spoke out. Did you perhaps run while fighting? It didn't seem like his strength, agility, or stamina changed much from before. If the giant snake had given him runes then uh, his runes should have increased by a large amount. And the snake did indeed look stronger than Han Su so the time that he took was too fast for killing it. Since the time it took for Han Su to come back only took around the time it took to smoke one cigarette. I killed it, lies, if he wasn't going to gain anything then why did he fight? No he did gain something. Only injuries all over the body. But it was to his expectations anyway. Since he guessed that he would at least run before he died. Han Su asked the three as he asked. The other people. The others excluding Jukiel and the two could not be seen. Jukiel grinded his teeth at those words. That they went that way. And leaving us behind, he thought of Hanchiol's words before he departed. That bitch. Both this guy and him, Jukiel had to choose. Either to fight in the front. Or wait until Han Su came back and then charge through the path with Han Su in the front. But he had no confidence to fight in the front. Damn it. I should have fought in the front from the beginning, while the others were constantly fighting, he had been left behind without being able to eat any runes. And now he could only support from the back, he was not at the level to fight in the front anymore. And the beasts in front of them would be even stronger. They at least had Han Su before, if he had fought in between the others then he would have died rather quickly. So he decided to wait for just five minutes. Just in case Han Su would run away from the fight. It's a relief, if he hadn't come then he would have probably had to fight in the front while listening to their hateful words but thankfully Han Su had come back. While Jukiel was thinking about this and that, Han Su had chosen a different direction than the others. If that path had been cleared already then the amount of runes he would be able to gain will be significantly lower. It was better to go somewhere where there was still a lot of things to hunt. And this path was more compatible with him. Jukiel only looked at Han Su pass by him but did not move. Han Su looked at Jukiel with an amused expression. Aren't you moving? And Jukiel relied at those words. Didn't you say you were never part of us already? Go ahead first, huh, these words were correct. I can clearly see his intentions but a guy being this straightforward is a first. It didn't really matter if there was somebody to fight with or not. Han Su laughed as he started to move towards the other path quickly. And Jukiel and his family slowly followed Han Su whilst leaving a gap. There. Aren't any options left, he was not at the level of fighting in the front anymore. He had to push ahead by sticking to someone. Surely such an environment like this wouldn't continue, as long as a similar environment like the first tutorial area came out then they can catch their breath. Jukiel started to gaze at Hansu's back with a feeling of being on a tightrope. Hoping that he wouldn't get mad and turn his blades at them. And hoping that he would clear the road well in the front. Yudaduk, who, Han Su made a dull expression as he killed the last Kurudal. This place's difficulty was where nine people had to fight. It was hard because he had to fight alone. Since he couldn't use cloud snacks in places like this, but it's still very good, Kong Han Su, strength, colorless. 0.03% stamina. 88.8 .8 agility. 84.0 perception. 85.1 mana. 58.4 magic. 35 physical resistance. 32 magic resistance. 32.7 he had been monopolizing the runes because he was fighting alone. And the fights had been getting easier because his resistances were increasing due to his monopolization. And Jukiel was looking at Han Su with a fed up expression from the back. 
Dot he's getting stronger and stronger, it didn't seem like his movements were getting faster or his strength was increasing. But he was gaining a lot less injuries than before. And because of that he was fighting faster and more aggressively. He just took an attack that he would usually dodge and then sliced off their necks like that. And because of this his speed was slower than when he fought together with the other group but he had long recovered the speed back. This kinda bugs me. He was traveling safely and comfortably. He just had to pick up a few bloody monsters that Hansu had leaked. And Jukiel was sufficient enough for these. But the fact that Hansu has been getting more and more leisurely had been bugging him. The perfect situation in his head was that Hansu was so busy fighting in the front and becoming a mess that he couldn't spare any effort to care about Jukiel himself. But if this happened he had no solution to when Hansu became enraged. Do I have to run away in the next fork on the road? But it was hard for him to clear the road alone. But the thing that had appeared in front of Jukiel wasn't a fork on the road. Tunnel. A giant tunnel located near the bottom of the mountain. And in front of it a very familiar existence was located there. Are you not on good terms? You traveled whilst leaving some distance between you two. Well whatever, congratulations on reaching the goal. And then the fairy pointed towards the inner parts of the tunnel. There was a dormant volcano's crater that could be seen along with few tens of people who had already reached this place next to many weird dot looking boats. Jukiel cried out in joy after seeing this. Yuwahaha. Arrived. We've arrived. Daddy. Thank you for your hard work. As if Hansu and Jukiel were the last ones, as soon as they entered the tunnel closed with a thunk sound and the ferry which was at the entrance flew in. Hello everyone. Welcome to the goal line. Hee <laughs> hee. Let's see. There's 75 alive right now. It's good that not many died. You guys worked hard. Dot. Whilst everyone was grinding their teeth, the fairy smiled as it spoke again. Since there's 75 people, 75 tickets should be prepared right. And then a ticket with strange patterns started to appear on the hands of the people. While the people were mumbling about the ticket, the fairy continued to talk. If you get on that then you can get on the boat that leads you to the island above. You've done well. I will now tell you how to use the ticket. Dot. Wasn't it just that they had to get on the boat after handing it over? Basically the boats you guys will get on is for three people, dot. And of course three tickets must be gathered in order for it to work. Isn't it so peaceful? Since it's three tickets per three people, there's no need to fight, everyone sighed in relief at these words. Since that meant that all 75 people could go up. But Han Su shook his head. There was no way that this would be it. And as he expected, the fairy continued to talk. But it will be unfair if one person or two people pay three tickets and get treated like three people right. So we prepared something special, goddammit, of course it won't just let us go that easily. The fairy made an amused expression as it looked at the people and spoke. Firstly, if you hand in three tickets then you can go to any island you want. By the way, if you think that all the islands above are the same then that's a huge misconception. Check the island's map in your pockets. The fairy laughed and spoke as it saw a few people's eyes shining. If you hand in three tickets with two people then you can go together but you cannot decide where it goes. The boat will move randomly, at the fairy's words, the eyes of the people who were comrades or partners changed. If they wanted to act together then they had to gather an extra ticket. Lastly if you hand in three tickets as three people then you will get off separately. You can go up but you cannot be together. A situation like a family would be very very sad right? I hope if you are in a family of three that you can gather nine tickets to go to the island you want. This bitch. Jukiel spat out curses without control. Nine tickets for three people. What was this nonsense? It was hard to even protect one at this moment. He could see Hanchiol and others watching with a fierce look from afar. And the fairy spoke in amusements without caring for such matters. There should be about. 
30 minutes left until the island collapses completely. Hee <laughs> hee. I guess only 25 boats are needed. I will separate the boats all around the crater. It won't be fun if you just protect the area of the boat right. Ticket. You just need to gather three tickets with whichever method and then depart. Good luck. The fairy disappeared after those words. And everybody's faces started to stiffen. It was better to go together and even better if you could go where you wanted. So it was better the more tickets you had. If there were six in a party then eighteen was optimal, nine was okay and six was a worst case scenario. The people who had laid their decisions looked around for weak people. And Hanchiol and the others who had been separated earlier looked at Jukiel's family with a smile. The other didn't know but they did. A way to gain three free tickets. God damn it. Jukiel cursed out. The boat was next to them. If they wanted to live then the three of them had to get on the boat at this instant. But if they get on the boat like that then they would be separated. Which meant his wife and daughter will die or face an even worse situation. Damn that what do I do? The fact that they had come this far proved that they were strong. So there was nobody who could get their tickets stolen by him. And then Han Su came into Jukiel's eyes. Han Su. Please give me your ticket. Hmm, as Han Su looked at Jukiel, Jukiel hurriedly smiled. If we have your ticket then my wife and I can go together. And then please take my daughter. If you do so then our whole family can live. Jukiel shouted in despair. Since then he could take his wife with him and protect her a bit more. And their daughter will be protected by Hansu so she will be able to live a bit longer despite being separated. If there are four people with six tickets then they can live a bit longer. Please. You can save lives this way. You are strong so isn't a piece of cake to gather two more tickets. You're so strong. Please save our family. Wow that he's not a joke, Hansu swirled his tongue at Jukiel's words. He had thought that he was very blunt but this was beyond imagination. He probably isn't a fool that would grant that right. But Hanchel was still worried so he started to run faster. Since if he did grant that then those tickets would be gone. Hurry. Please, Jukiel, who saw Hanchel and the others charge at them, he had pleaded something that wouldn't even come out because of his ego. And Hanso's eyes calmed down in a cold manner as he looked at Jukiel. Chapter 27 Ticket, 2, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Hansu shook his head. You need to handle your own problems. This guy's suggestion was that two other people had to die. Since the ticket needed for four people was six. He was asking Han Su to kill two for him because he didn't have the ability to do so himself. It wasn't that he didn't but rather these things were something he had to do himself. They were precious family to Jukiel but in Han Su's eyes, the other two were of equal value as them. Jukiel grinded his teeth after seeing Han Su shake his head but he realized quickly that it wasn't the time to do so. Jukiel, who had seen Hanchel charging at him, clenched down his teeth as he striked down on the neck of his daughter. Smack the daughter fell unconscious without even being able to scream. Jukiel, after lifting his daughter up, took her ticket as well as his dazed wife's ticket and got on the boat. It didn't even take a second because the boat was next to them. As Jukiel grasped the three tickets the boat floated up in the air whilst making strange sound. And Jukiel's wife watched this scene in a daze as she mumbled. Dot honey. I am sorry. But I should at least protect our daughter, if they go as three then they would all die. Since his wife and daughter would die if they get separated. But if he went instead then he could at least protect his daughter to some degree. You. Are you crazy? The wife, who was in shock, regained her senses and then spat out in rage. But that at moment something aggressively landed on the top of the boat. Boom. Hey uncle. Stop, damn it, Jukiel made an expression of despair as he looked at Hanchel who was holding a blade onto his daughter's neck whom he was holding. 
the boat immediately stopped working as somebody who wasn't part of the boat as well as his ticket got on the boat. And then everyone realized. Then you couldn't leave this damned place with just some good luck. Only people who can protect their boats can leave this place safely. Han Su mumbled inwardly. It isn't the time to sit around and idle, he wanted to just stick around and then take some runes after killing a few people but if he dragged his time like that and then got caught by his ankles by others to drag him down then it would be over just like that. He had to leave as soon as he collected the tickets. You should get off with your daughter, Hanchel, who had taken the tickets in Jukiel's hands, kicked off Jukiel and his daughter onto the ground. He didn't like it but it was a bit too much to kill the dad and his daughter together. And if he tried to kill them then they would charge at him in a crazy manner which would drag him down. You beast. How could you do this? As Jukiel cried out in despair whilst holding his daughter, Hanchel moved his blade closer as he smirked. So if you had fought in the front like others then you wouldn't be in such a situation. Uncle knows that you were around the same level as me when you came here right. Dot. Jukiel grinded his teeth at those words but could not say anything. Since these were all truths. If he had fought in the front non dot stop and eight runes then he probably wouldn't have lost the boat this easily now. Jukiel finally realized why Hansu didn't care or interfere no matter how much they fought in front of him. Dot you were the most ruthless one, he didn't whip others nor encourage others. He just left them alone. So they could choose and deal with the problems themselves. And the fact that he had hidden in the fact with an excuse of defending his family had came back to him in conclusion. Hanchel, who had been smirking at the dazed and despair filled Jukiel next to his crying wife, turned his head and then spoke to Han Su whilst looking at him. Han Su. Let's go together, hmm. I wish for you to be with us. I can gather the tickets for you if you need them, he hadn't said anything but Hanchel felt as if steam were rising off from his ears. A wife and daughter who did not do anything. And Jayakal who had stayed in the back to defend such people. A guy who had the strength to fight but only relied on his heels and took runes. An extremely strong but crazy woman. And two who were fighting properly but did not catch the eyes. But because the others in the front were getting trampled by the eyes, the last two was actually rather dependable. And at the same time, he thought of a game he used to enjoy in the past a game where you had to make a team with five people. In order to beat the enemy, they had to do whatever the team did no matter how much you hated it. It was the same here. Even if there were a lot of of the nine who were performing useless actions, they had to endure and follow no, this was actually harder than the game since a game would be over just like that if you gave up but here you would just die. An extremely serious situation. He had to take useful people but there were nobody who caught his eyes. No, it actually made his insides twist and turn at the thoughts of these people becoming a person who would be like a family to him after sharing the symbol. And Han Su was naturally an existence that would catch his eyes in such a situation. He wasn't a superhero or something like that. Well. We had originally started at the same place so there's no way he could be like that, he wasn't an existence like a deus ex machina which could solve the current situation by slashing apart the fairy and then returning them back to their original world. Since the current Hansu was also receiving injuries. But he was very tough. He was at least much stronger than them and the attitude of how he fought showed that he could trust and leave things to Han Su. He felt like a veteran that had lived through decades of battles. And if his character's like that then it's not that bad, he followed the thing he needed to and didn't fall back, he also didn't take more than he earned. This was why such decisions were made. We need people like him, someone like him was the type of people he needed to him and Hyunjin. That was the only way to go through this world in this damnable world. Come with us. I believe that you have psychic powers since I've also seen it before, and then Hanchel showed the back of his hand. Only a small shining symbol. A symbol that couldn't be seen until now was shining on the back of Hanchel's hand. As Han Su showed a conspicuous color, Hanchel continued talking after believing that he had caught his interest. This is a psychic power that was manifested by my friend, 
and then Hanchel told Han Su the fact that he had found out, which was rather lacking informatively because the time they had it for wasn't that long, that Han Su already knew. If I gain the permission of my friend then I can give you this symbol to you too. And my friend would definitely agree to you, the talk had already been completed already if this guy was that trustable then let's give him the symbol first. It didn't matter what his plans that he had in his mind were. Since if they received the symbol, they would become a trustable companion. Be with us. We are different from those mediocre people over there. And once you get this we can trust each other completely. I know well, he knew too well. How could he not? Han Su, who had thought of Eries and his other friends, just shook his head. He could not go beneath a lord this time. I'll refuse, hmm, Hanchel spoke out in surprise as if he didn't expect the refusal. Why would he refuse this? It wasn't that they were tying him down with a contract. The symbol was connecting them with credit and connection. And it was more trustable than a contract because of this and it also shone during times of crisis. It wasn't a relationship made of understanding, which was like a sandcastle, which would collapse at a slight touch. It was a psychic power that made a lord. He had looked at Han Su as if his explanation wasn't enough but that was not it. It wasn't that he was pondering but rather a direct refusal. Does he have a reason? Hanchel wanted to try a bit more but realized that this wasn't the time to be doing so. Since others were approaching him after realizing that he had three tickets. He definitely needed three tickets. Since he agreed to meet in the above with Hyunjin. Dot, damn. Then there's nothing I can do, the boat was not rising as if it didn't work if there was more than three tickets. Hanchel threw a ticket at Han Su and then spoke as the boat rised up. You will probably survive and rise up. Let's see each other again if our destiny meets, and then Hanchel disappeared quickly with the boat. Damn. This is mine. No. I'm the one who's going to take this. As Han Su left the ticket on the ground, everybody was making a huge commotion as they charged at the ticket. But even within that chaos, Han Su just continued to stand firmly. He could interfere and then distribute three tickets at a time. But if he did that then somebody who had the ability to collect three will lose their lives. And it wouldn't mean much to save them to raise them up. Since weaklings who can't even protect their own ticket will just die above. Since it got harder and harder as things went on. In the end, you must take care of yourself, the fight for the ticket continued after Hanchel had left. The boats departed one by one. The strongest people leisurely collected tickets and then rode on the boat alone to go where they wanted. The people who weren't at that level looked around and then made an alliance as they got on the boat in duos. And the weakest ones decided that going as a group of three was better grouped up and then rose in the boats as threes. Soon there were only two boats left. And somebody approached Han Su while he was looking at the boats. Why did you refuse Hanchel's offer earlier? When Han Su turned around he saw Jimin. Jimin was rather laid back as if she had already collected three tickets. Han Su opened his mouth after staring at Jimin for a while. I have my own reasons. For what reason did you come to me? Jimin laughed as she spoke. I wanted to give you an offer as well. Let's go together, and then Jimin showed him the black symbol on her hand. A clear evidence that she was connected to a lord. But Han Su shook his head. A deny. Well. It's as I expected, Jimin shrugged her shoulders. She knew that her offer would be refused he he had already refused Hanchel's offer. Han Su was a necessity to her sister but if not then there was nothing she could do. But why is he still around here? Han Su was just quietly standing in the corner without stealing tickets from others. Is he doing this because he feels bad stealing tickets from the others? Then there wasn't a failure like this guy. I knew as soon as you brought that Jukiel or whatever guy behind you, Jimin tutate her tongue. And if it was really like that then Han Su was not needed to them. They didn't need people who weren't determined. Well. He wouldn't die at least, as long as he protected his ticket then the last boat will remain. 
so there will not be a case that the boat will leave as long as he held his ticket in his hand. He would probably go up after gathering the remaining tickets right before the island fell completely. Well I'm not interested anymore, Jimin, who had lost interest in Hansu, got on a boat and then left the island. And now there was one boat, three tickets and tens of people left. The people who had been running away and throwing their tickets because they were afraid of the people on the boats. In one aspect it was a clear choice. Since the people who had left were the people who wouldn't only take their tickets but also take their rooms. As the situation got dire, the people who had charged at them died just like that. The people who had been zealously fighting and gathering runes were not an opponent for people who did not. But it was right before the island would collapse. It wasn't the time to hide around anymore. They needed three tickets to activate the boat and the tickets in their hands would be meaningless without the ticket in Hansu's hands. And soon the people who had been hiding the ticket started to run crazily at Hansu. That guy was actually much much stronger than them. Since the people who knew he had a ticket had all been crushed after trying to take him on. Wasn't the fact that he stayed meant that he would take the last two with him. Which meant the two people Hansu chose would go with him. But the others wouldn't just stay to watch this scene. The people started to charge at the people running towards Hansu. Damn it. This is mine. You crazy bastard. There's no such thing as yours and mine. Damn it. Please take this and take me too. You have to survive too. And Jukiel was naturally part of this, Hansu. Please for the sake of the friendship we had so far. Please. At least take my daughter. Hansu made a sad expression as he looked at them. Their expectations were wrong. He hadn't stayed to take two more people. That I am sorry. These guys weren't cards that were abandoned. These were people that he had come back to save. But he could not save everyone. He could at most only save a few tens more no matter how he struggled within the tutorial area where the influence of the fairy was too strong. There were too many things he needed to do and he could clearly see how many people would die if he failed to do so. If he were to be pushed around because of his emotions here then billions of people will die. He needed three tickets. Since he needed to go to the the only reason why he had stayed was because he had something he still needed to do. I will act according to my plans he needed to focus on his main mission. Ares had told him that he was going back to save humanity but that was just the result. He hadn't come back to save every single human. He had come back to win. Becoming strong in the tutorial was just a part of this plans as well as a part of his methods, without this method then he would fail to reach his goals and failing to reach the preliminaries meant failing to see the goal. If humanity lost again because he took a step back then he had to just kill himself by smashing his head on a boulder. I'm sorry, dot what? The people spoke in confusion from Hanso's abrupt speech. Hanso's expression, which had sadness, started to turn cold. The reason why he hadn't killed or stolen so far was to stop the stories from spreading. And he couldn't kill everyone who had seen this just to shut their mouths. Eries disagreed until the end. But Keldian kept pushing him back until the end and he added something else. These were people who would fall along with the island. The people here aren't the people who he would choose from. These were people who had already been weeded out in this damnable round of game. And this is where Keldian's suggestion came out. They had finally reached a consensus after arguing for a while. He would not purposely kill them. He didn't feel like it and if he did do that then the people with the Lord's marks would know that he had done it. And that would be troublesome. But he was going to devour everybody who had been left behind until the end before he left. Since these guys were going to fall with the island anyway. And down below was an ordinary looking but harsh ocean. If they fall then they would die in extreme pain. Slowly, bit by bit. The fairies watched this in extreme amusement. I'll at least send you off comfortably, Kiyik. Hansu grasped the needle in his hand so hard to the point it crumpled. The rune-eater snake that was around his wrist shouted in glee as if it expected predation. 
Then Han Su charged towards the people making a commotion with a cold look on his face. Chapter 28 Central Island, 1, you are listening at NovelFull.audio Han Su looked at the central island that he could see afar from the boat. An island that was huge even in comparison to other islands. Dot, you're always out of the expectation. He he. Don't worry. We don't spread things like this around, the fairy looked at the needle on Hansu's hand which was still dripping of blood as Han Su looked at the fairy expressionlessly. No regrets killing humans wasn't comfortable even if they were going to die anyway and he was just sending them off in a more comfortable way after judging that leaving them alive would be more painful for them. But he had no thoughts of hesitating if it was necessary and didn't interfere with his plans. Since he hadn't come to play hero. The fairy might have gotten awkward as Han Su stared at it expressionlessly as it shrugged its shoulders and started to explain. Welcome to the central island. You are the last person. We will start now, and at that moment, everybody who was on the landing area teleported into one place. This is. Everybody looked around. A giant castle. Thousands of people were looking around after being teleported high above the walls. And soon the fairy which had appeared above their head started to explain the situation. Hello, 1912 participants in the central island. I guess I need to explain three things first basically. There are three things of utmost importance on this island. Castle. Demon Lord's Castle and Underground Dungeon. Everyone made a bitter expression at those words there was only the underground dungeon marked on the island maps. The underground dungeon of the central island was filled with beasts with good rewards and that they could get strong and armed quickly. And that was why everyone had used three tickets in order to come to the central island. The castle they were standing on was one thing, but what was the demon castle? The fairy laughed as it continued to speak. My explanation was a bit lacking but these aren't lies. Can you see the castle afar? At those words everybody above the castle looked at something on the edge of the island. It was an island but it was so big that they had to focus really hard with their eyes in order to see and figure out that it was a castle. That is the demon lord's castle which is your final destination. Well you would all die if a real demon lord were to come out so we specially prepared a weaker version of the demon lord for you instead. A demon lord. Hansu chuckled. He thought of the thing that would be causing a massacre against the other races on the seventh level of the abyss. If that thing did really come here then everyone would have been killed off just from a simple breath. The people here, including Han Su, were not of the level to kill it even if it was a weaker version. The demon army is largely separated into the demons and undeads. The demons are the ones that give bountiful rewards that you think of. But the undead do not give anything. No item, no rune no anything. The fairy rested for a moment and then continued to explain. And the castle is where you guys are at. There is one month. If you can withstand the attack of the demon lord and protect the crystal in the center of the castle you will win. You can also win by just taking over the demon lord's castle. Everyone made a bitter face at these words. Since they could see the swarming armies on the way to the demon lord's castle at a glance. When would they have the time to break through them? It was obvious that defense was easier than offense. And finally, I should explain the underground dungeon. You can see multiple entrances on the insides of the castle right. Everyone nodded as they looked towards the inner parts of the castle. There were multitudes of suspicious-looking dungeon entrances located in numerous places. There were entrances on the castle walls and even entrances in the drill hall. These are the same as the underground dungeons that you know of. If you hunt in there then the runes will drop like flies and artifacts will drop as well as you knew, and then the fairy talked about colorless runes and artifacts. And then everybody's expression changed. A lot had happened but it had only been 10 days since they came here. They had become stronger physically but they only had a knife at most as a weapon. But a chance to earn higher runes and artifacts. The fairy persuades them to go into the dungeon's ASAP in order to become stronger. That damnable thing, Hansu sighed. 
since he knew what would happen if things went on like this now. You will need a tutorial right. Since it's only the first day there'll only be about three attacks. There also won't be any demons. Start. And soon a large amount of skeletons started rising up at a scary rate outside the castle with clacking sounds. Damn it. Isn't that a weak mob that we fought around level 1? A person mumbled atop the castle walls. The skeletons with blue fire burning in their eye sockets or the ghouls who were screaming out terrifying roars were not weak mobs in anybody's eyes. No, they were actually armed better than themselves who only had a sword at most. Since they were even wearing armors. And soon the undead who had formed a battle line started to charge towards the castle door and the castle walls. Guard it. And soon the adventures and the undead started to clash with a fearsome energy. That we need to make rolls. One of the lords spoke with a fatigued expression. There were a few lords between adventurers. The lords had armed their forces and came into the central island by getting three tickets in order to recruit stronger people. There were twelve clans and lords gathered in the central island. They weren't even half of the two thousand people here but it was enough to speak out with power. Since the other adventures didn't even have anything driving them. But there were expressions of fatigue on the faces of twelve lords after the defense had ended. Damn that it's really gruesome, the owner of the symbol on Jimin, Yaren, grinded her teeth. The attack continued for an hour, then they were given a three-hour break only to continue fighting for another hour. This had repeated three times. When they first fought, about thirty didn't fight so about one thousand nine hundred people fought above the castle walls. Fifteen hundred fought during the second time above the castle walls. There were only 700 people left above the castle walls during the final fight. And thanks to that the castle was almost invaded by a mere tutorial attack. Those damnable bastards. It wasn't that they had died or got injured. At first only 30 people had escaped. The 30 people who had discreetly went below came back completely different after fighting 2 to 3 hours. They had gained a large amount of runes and artifacts in that short moment. The fairy did not lie to them. Hunting in the underground provided a way for them to improve very fast. The problem was after that. After seeing the thirty people get strong, people who were defending the castle walls had gotten jealous. The undead who were charging at them didn't drop any runes nor artifacts. So they realized after one defending wave. That they couldn't get strong defending the castle walls. And at that moment around 400 people left. They couldn't even control them. Since the entrance to the underground dungeon was everywhere, they just simply escaped during the chaos of the battle. But it was fine to this point. Since the conscious that the undead's attack was threatening and that they needed to protect the castle was still alive. The problem was the third wave. The thirty who had entered the dungeon while the others had become a mess whilst defending had come out with a complete makeover. They had fought relatively safely and collected a large amount of runes and artifacts. And the might of these artifacts were indeed very strong. The people who were below the lord received the symbols because they naturally had good teamwork and good potential. They were a level above the others in terms of skill. But this gap was closed within a few hours. And the 400 people who had entered whilst ignoring the second wave had also come out stronger. And this had made people anxious. They couldn't become strong if they didn't enter the dungeon. So the people who had become anxious all left during the final wave and then the people left above with good consciences were just barely able to defend the wave. The first day. Despite it being the tutorial. They couldn't even imagine how they would defend starting tomorrow. Damn, now it's hard to control them the people who had entered first got well along with each other so they got together to create a laughable group called. If their name was at least cool then it might have been less infuriating but it made them even matter. And people who had escaped the defense line had been gathering under that group. They had solved their guiltiness of betraying their comrades and going to the dungeon for their own benefit by grouping together. They would be treated as traitors around the defenders but there was nothing to be embarrassed about when they grouped with others who had done the same thing. 
and thanks to this the semi, basement union had become as strong as the twelve clans combined. And the root of the problem was that the twelve lords thought they had to defend the castle and had not entered the dungeon. They had to hunt in turns even if they had to defend a little harder. They had focused on defending because they didn't think that the gap would be closed in a day like this but the effect of hunting in the underground dungeon was beyond their imagination. And they had even created justification. And this justification had been excusing away the guilt that the semi, basement union and the others had been feeling. Motherfuckers, Yaren's beautiful face crumpled. The justification was good. And she approved of it. They couldn't just defend in order to defend this castle. They had to rotate between defending and attacking. If they improved too much then they would invade it due to the weak defense and if they defend too much then they would get overwhelmed by the forces getting stronger and stronger. But when would they actually come out? The people were now setting camps in front of the dungeons and were going back and forth. And they were acting like this while their powers were around the same level. If their strength increased then they could see what would happen very clearly, damn. How do we solve this? While the lords were racking their brains like this a commotion was going on below. This bitch. It's a hero of justice really. What? They had poked their heads outside the windows with confused looks. Bitch. Who are you to be ordering us? We are going to defend the line above tomorrow. Siangun, one of the original members of the group, shouted aggressively. A change starting from tomorrow. What was this nonsense? Han Su nodded at those words. Yeah. Since we played our fill today, we need to start earning for our own food starting tomorrow. The people who have been defending shall go into the dungeons tomorrow, you damnable fellow, Sun Hoon grinded his teeth. He was one of the thirty people who had first entered the dungeon. Why was he acting kind after he had started the whole thing? And then Kun Jin, who had been standing in the back, spoke as he walked out. Calm down. We aren't saying that we won't go out. If we hunt for two more days then we can defend it properly after getting stronger. We can trade then. Let's not fight between ourselves, Han Su smirked at those words. By then the Lord clans would have become a huge mess. That's why it's difficult then there was no reason to splitting it perfectly like this. Dismissed. Starting tomorrow, everyone will go up to fight, Gukjin crumped his expression at those words. This guy had some guts. The reason why Gukjin had stopped the fight was because he felt that Han Su was still very useful. Since he had been advancing in the dungeon with that weird psychic powers. They couldn't have become that strong by themselves. But the situation was now different. You were definitely stronger before but. If you come out like this then things might become difficult, Gukjin looked at Han Su coldly. They all had one or two colorless runes originally. And from today's hunt they had all accomplished in getting over two new colorless runes. And a few people succeeded in making colorless runes for strength, stamina, agility, and perception. And because of this they knew. Their colorless perception runes told them clearly. That that guy only had strength colorless runes. Han Su chuckled as he touched his ear. Kong Han Su, strength, colorless. 0.03% stamina. 88.8 .8 agility. 84.0 perception. 85.1 mana. 88.4 magic. 84.5 physical resistance. 85 magic resistance. 85.3 Of course I can't win like this there was a huge difference between 1 and 4 colorless runes. And there were even differences in numbers too. Han Su looked around at the 30 people around him. He didn't like to interfere but they had to at least work their worth. If the people here who only cared about self-gain went crazy then the castle will get destroyed. You won't listen if I just talk right. Dot this bitch. Han Su smirked as he put a cloud snack in his mouth. There's a lot to do in order to destroy the demon lord's castle in one month, I need to do things properly in the beginning, they needed to work non-stop for the whole month. And even then it was just a possibility. 
The difficulty of the demon lord's castle was that high and because of this it was necessary to clear it. Since that's the only way to challenge the final dungeon. This was something that even Kuang Gunju couldn't clear, he just went up after defending fervently. There was only one person whom he knew that had cleared it. Iris. Well I won't be able to clear like you but. As long as you reach the destination, that's all that mattered. Han Su, who had inhaled the smoke, looked around as he laughed coldly. Translators note the cliffhang height is over 9,000. The cliffhanger is over 9,000. Kabata-chan's note dude, I even had to correct your translator's note, aka TLN or TN, facepalm. Chapter 29 Central Island, 2, you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Hong Han Su stared at the pedal flying towards him expressionlessly. A colorless artifact that increased cutting powers. It was a pretty good one. Cutting was considered a skill so it was something that required both physical and magic resistances. But Han Su stared at the sword expressionlessly. It was easy to dodge. But Han Su just charged at it. It wasn't always good to dodge. If you dodge then your balance will fall apart which will slow down your counterattack. And if you had the confidence to block it completely then it was even less necessary. Of course, resistances acted as something that reduced the damage but not as a shield. It didn't make one invincible even if it was at the colorless level, so getting a severe hit can't have no damage. If it had only that then he probably couldn't have beaten the carnivorous beast. However, that was only when you get hit properly, in a situation where you can see the attack clearly it was actually hard to even purposely get hit properly. I can see it all, perception that had reached the colorless stage couldn't even be compared to the previous. A more perfect battle foresight came into his head than what he had when he fought the carnivorous beast. Kududaduk Hansu deflected the side of the blade perfectly with the ring on his finger. Tong. And at that moment the of Nirmaha's ring activated and destroyed the cutting magic on Arapan's pedal. Burke. Even before the enemy could get surprised, Hansu's fist had even pushed back the enemy's blade. Then the sword which was dispelled of the cutting magic couldn't penetrate through his physical resistances. Tumble. Sacrifice your own flesh to break its bones. A battle style that he had learned while progressing through the abyss. You can't attack if you focus on dodging. Then the enemy will live longer and this will in turn cause your few remaining friends next to you die. As long as you don't die then you needed to kill them in one strike. You can't kill if you are afraid of getting hurt. Since as long as you survive, you can just heal it back up. One shot one kill. His battle style, which he couldn't utilize due to his lack of resistances, started coming back as his resistances and Nirmaha's ring was set up. Since he had blocked it was now time for the neck. The blade moved at an extreme speed towards Gukjin's neck after he had lost his balance. Wow! Gukjin felt like his soul was about to depart as he saw the blade that felt like it would cut his neck in two. The damnable increased perception and agility was showing the blade flying towards his neck clearly. Oh right. I shouldn't kill them. Hansu came to his senses as he spun the sword around. A pedal that he had attained in the floors below. This was also a colorless artifact. It wasn't an amazing artifact but if he hit them like this then their heads would get crushed without resistances. He deactivated the skill on the blade edge and even turned the direction of the swing towards his abdomen. It wasn't that the abdomen was safer but he had an artifact that he picked up earlier it won't destroy his intestines since he had even drained the strength from the strike. Puk. Kwakok. It's rather tiring trying to not kill. Han Su frowned but he had to do so. If he carefully whips them then he could send them to the battlefield after healing them. He had to let loose a little bit. This was not the abyss, I need to save them. They are precious resources the event in the central island was a bit different than the ones so far. It was not something that could be cleared by flying about alone. He had to use as much as he could. He had settled down about the half but the cloud snack's duration still had around 8 minutes left. 
thought it's a little wasteful to smoke the whole thing, but Han Su threw away his regrets. Since he could raise all his runes to colorless stage by tomorrow. Which meant this guy won't be needed anymore. Han Su loosened up a little and then charged at the fifteen people who were staring at him in fear. Dot hmm. Jimin, who had been standing next to Yeren, gulped her saliva. The thirty over there could go up against a clan if they combined their strength. But they weren't even opponents for him. He wasn't even dodging their attacks. She had thought that he was crazy but she knew now. That he had the confidence to ignore all those attacks. How high are his resistances? She had learned of resistances by chance from a skill. It was so hard to raise that the person with the highest resistances only had around 30. But they had realized that it was better to raise perception and agility to dodge than resistances so they gave up raising them. Since it wasn't that the resistances absorbed all the damage if they raised it. But her thoughts changed completely after seeing Han Su fight. There was no outstanding stat out of strength, stamina, agility, or perception. But his defense, ability to control his body and battle perception were at a level of a different dimension. A battle tactic that was minimized in order to cut the opponent's neck in one strike. Approach by dodging and charge whilst blocking with the body until they got into range, then kill them in one shot. Physical similarities weren't important. No, it was the exact opposite. If the four great stats, which were strength, stamina, agility, and perception, were similar to him then you would the instant you stand in front of him. What the hell is that ring also? Where the hell did he gain something like that? Jimin mumbled as she looked at Han Su who had beaten down all thirty of them even before he finished the cigarette. There were no deaths. But the ones alive couldn't even meet their eyes with Han Su. Jimin could figure out why that was the case. They probably felt like their necks had been sent flying, those guys probably felt like their necks had been cut off. Since they would have felt like that if they were in their position. Damn it. That's just unfair. Jimin made a complicated expression. It wasn't something that could be solved by raising stat, getting better skill, having psychic powers or having better artifacts. She had realized that it would merely be pearls on a pig's neck if you couldn't melt them down into your own battle style. She probably wouldn't be able to display half the battle power of Hansu even if she had the same amount of stat, skill, psychic powers and weapon. And Yaren, who had been standing next to her, had the same complicated thoughts. What exactly is his psychic power? Did he use a skill? She had thought that other than psychic powers like hers, no one would be able to be her opponent. Since the rate at which one person getting strong could not compare with the strength of 50 or 100 people getting strong. This was a huge misconception. It exists an existence that could crush a clan in a headfirst clash alone. Whilst everybody was looking at Han Su with complicated expressions, Han Su shouted around after staring at the half-smoked cloud snack for a while. I should solve everything before I burn up the cloud snack, starting tomorrow the semi, basement union and the clan unions will form an alliance then fight and defend on rotations. This is my opinion and is not the answer so if you have any objections, come out now to talk. If it's reasonable we shall talk it out. Objections. But of course there wasn't anybody who could come out. Of course they could probably win if all 1000 of them charged at him. But no one had such thoughts. But from the start, the semi, basement union was a group formed by people whose greediness had advanced a bit far. They knew that the people going first would be crushed to bits so who would go first. And talking things out. The one thing they wanted to suggest was this. Let them hunt a few days more below without rotating. The blade will come flying at them instantaneously and they knew from the way he fought that the ones who went first would get crushed. And the clan unions behind wouldn't stand still either. They were already on bad terms. This is indeed much more comfortable, it was faster and more comfortable to crush down 30 of them as an example instead of going against all of them. Han Su, who had trampled upon the masses in one shot, turned around towards the clan unions as he spoke. 
let's talk for a bit, Dotum. They were all anxious as they looked at Han Su. Honestly they had a bit of confidence in suppressing the semi-basement union if they went crazy until now. Since the people who had been gathered from understanding were like crumbs unlike them who were like a compact mass. But if that guy acted as the centripetal force and ate all of semi-basement union then they could not look down on him. No, his battle force was very burdensome to them from the start. Han Su chuckled. Don't worry. I don't have any thoughts of becoming a leader, he hadn't tied them together in order to become a king. It was better to leave things like that to people with appropriate traits. The thing he needed was his own sphere of influence. First I will put down the basic rules and system, if these guys fall apart then he won't be able to roam around because he would be defending. Of course it won't last long but. Han Su mumbled as he walked towards the clan lords. Hmm, Gukti, who was one of the twelve clan lords, smiled in contentment as he saw the view in front of him. That guy called Han Su. He really did something admirable, all the ruling powers within the castle were divided around the twelve clan lords. Han Su's words were simple. And at those words the others started to hurriedly absorb the remaining semi. Basement Union's people. If there was only one clan then they probably wouldn't have gathered this hard. Since they wanted to fill them up with as many elites as possible. But they couldn't ignore anybody in this place because they were just mediocre roamers. They had to decrease the amount of mediocre roamers and increase the number of their clan's people in order to not get pushed back. And in result the number of people in the clans had multiplied to about 1100. Everyone had recruited people under their clan up to their limit. So about 800 people were left. And these 800 people were also divided fairly into the clans. And after this, every clan had about 90 clansmen and about 70 normal adventurers. A number that the clan could control. And after they had completed this process, they agreed to continuously defend and hunt in rotations. And when the runes and the system that everybody had to keep and follow were set up, Han Su let go of his influence. He was nowhere to be seen during hunts and had participated during defense but he didn't have any interest in being a leader. Well yeah. The psychic powers they had was the strongest point out of all the charisma, power and decision making abilities. Though I want to use non.clan member a bit more. Gukti didn't like the fact that he had to treat normal adventurers and his own clansmen the same way. But he couldn't do anything. Since they had set up fair distribution with rules clearly and the fact that the semi-basement union had still existed. TSK. It would have been much better if those 30 had been killed then, they couldn't treat them recklessly since the 30 who had been beaten down acted as the main leaders and looked over interchanges. Since they might move to another clan and the fact that the number 800 was still a very burdensome number. It somewhat feels like raising a workers association, whatever happened there were some leisure now. Though it was only a bit. Hmm, then there's no reason to send them all to defend the 1900 gathered here were not grouped stably. Since there was always friction between clans to clans and clans to semi-basement union in order to gain a bit more. I should prepare a little, Gukti, who had completed his thoughts, went into action immediately. Yeren spoke with a cold expression. As I saw it the people assigned to defend didn't do so. Didn't your clan have responsibility of the northeastern side? A few undeads had gotten past the other defense lines because you took out of the defenders to hunt, Gukti, one of the clan lords, smiled leisurely as he spoke. Oh come on. Miss Yeren. Listen to me for a bit. There's quite a lot of leisure lately yeah. Is there a reason for all six clans to defend the walls? Some of the clan lords nodded at those words. Yaren grinded her teeth. Lot of leisure my ass these were people who were secretly pulling out defenders during waves to hunt. She could have ignored them if they defended their spot properly at least. Since they tried to defend without casualties with small numbers their lines had been pushed back and because of that there were damages to other clans as well. Gukti laughed at Yaren as he spoke again. And look. 
We have some leisure now but does it make sense that the fairy is leaving us so comfortably like this? The demons are nowhere to be seen yet. We need to prepare for that moment and get strange. You are talking about some interesting things. Include me too, Han Su smirked as he entered the room of lords and at that moment the expressions of a few other lords and Gukti froze. Well. Two days. It's lasted a while if it's this much, but it was better to solve anything before the real start of the battle on the third day when the demons come out. Kong Han Su. This bitch. He was nowhere to be seen but why did he have to come now, Gukti? who had been looking at Han Su with a slightly anxious expression, shook his head. It was said that they had to keep the rules no matter what but who could argue him for only this much. And they had gotten strong in the past few days and their numbers had increased to around 160 from the 50 in the past. He had also hunted but it seemed like his artifacts didn't have much change and two days of getting stronger won't change much. Their situations were different from the past. You raised us up like this. Let's see what you've got to say, there was no reason to back down. Gukti calmed down as he started to look at Han Su with a cold expression Kabato-chan's note erm. The sponsored chapter is here. Chapter 30 Central Island, 3, you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. This is another sponsored chapter. Han Su spoke as he looked at Gukti. I was sure we agreed to abide by the rules. We said that you can take the things you earned while hunting but that we needed to keep a ratio between hunting and defending. Gukti made a slightly anxious face but then quickly shook his head. He couldn't back off here. Then my rebellion was useless they had grown to the point where nothing can shake them. But this was only possible because Han Su had given them all the power. So he was curious. What did he believe in to hand all the power over to them and raising them like so? I need to find what he is believing in, their clans were at a level where it couldn't be compared to the ones of the past. Because Han Su in front of them had created a safe measure, they could fight faster and have less casualties. And the non-dot members under his authority had become closer to him due to his hospitality. Everything from quantity to quality. Their power could not even compare to Han Su when he had crushed the others on the first day. Well. This guy did indeed get strong too. It seemed that he had gotten strong as well. As if he had gotten strong by eating the colorless runes from the dungeon. Though it's amazing that all his runes are colorless. It wasn't that blades didn't go through. How could the speed at which one person gets stronger compare to the speed of 15160 people getting stronger? And I'm not alone, at least a few clans had the same thoughts as Han Su and the defenses will fall if they aren't here. So how could he attack him in such a situation? The only reason why they had some leisure was because the 12 clans were defending, and if there is a fight then the defense will break apart. But there's still some leisure which meant there exists something that could threaten them. And Gukti did not like the current situation where he did not know what that could be. I need to poke him a bit more, Gukti, who had finished his thoughts, made a leisurely face as he spoke. I mean come on. Friend. Listen. Would that fairy thing leave us like this? It's logical to be getting strong while we have the leisure to do so. You need to have some flexibility in the rules, Han Su made an amused expression as he spoke. Then why didn't you discuss it with other clansmen? I'm pretty sure it's in the agreement. The ratio of hunting and defense won't be decided by one clan but rather on the consensus of six clans. Dot. Yaren glared at Gukti in anger. Her clan had taken damage because that guy hadn't followed that rule and acted how he wanted. Jimin, her precious younger sister, was injured and was recovering. Gukti mumbled inwardly. What would it mean to follow such rules the reason why he had discreetly taken out some forces was to be better than other clans. He knew instinctively. This place was dangerous but it was a place where they could get stronger much faster than in the other islands. They needed to create a gap here so they can crush down the others after getting higher. But if all the clans were to put with the same ratio of clansmen in the fight then what would it mean if there were 11 other clans at a similar level as his? 
superiority was a result of difference. It hadn't been long since he had come here but he knew something very important. I must get strong whenever I get the chance to. Without stopping. That was the only way of winning. But I can't say it out loud like that, it was because it was a decision that came up whilst I was thinking. It seemed like everyone was busy. It was an excuse that a dog wouldn't believe but that was why it was effective. Quickly. Show me what you are believing in, does he act like this because he believes he can cut off their necks here? Gukti knew that Hansu wasn't somebody dumb. And there were plenty of guards outside. He would get surrounded immediately. But at that moment Gukti, who was making a leisurely expression, froze for a moment. Wait. How did he get in here? At that moment Gukti felt a chill run down his back. The location of their conference room was right below the lookout tower for the crystal they had to protect. This was the safest room where the castle's entirety was visible. That was why they had decided for it to be their conference room. Since it would be cumbersome if some crazy few ones caused terror because they don't like how things are. And they had selected the most trusted people in their clans as guards and had set them up outside. Three from each of twelve clans to make thirty-six. The conference doesn't last long so if it wasn't a number that affected the defense and as a lord, they should have at least this much privilege. But there was no sound of clashing. Did he perhaps crush them all? Everyone had been looking at Han Su with similar expressions. Han Su chuckled as he laughed. You see, I've gotten a new merchandise these days. To fit the season. And then Han Su sent in a bit of mana onto the bracelet on his wrist. SHHK. Hansu's body quickly disappeared from the sight. The eyes of the lords became cold. That is. Invisibility. If that was it then it wouldn't be a problem. Since their perception stat wasn't that bad to the point where they would lose the enemy because they couldn't see something. But they couldn't see where he was. He had disappeared in front of them but they didn't know where in the room he was. There was something that worked even against their increased perception. There was a skill that helped with perfect invisibility on that bracelet. If a weakling had used it then it would have been obvious but they couldn't know because of the bracelet's powers coupled with Hansu's movements. Everyone felt chills run down their back. He had walked through their most trustworthy 36 clansmen. Despite the fact that they were on extreme alert. This meant that the amount of the clan's strength wasn't important. What would it mean if the surrounding army was strong? It would be over right away if he cut your neck in your sleep. Dot he showed it to us on purpose, why would he show something so precious? Something like that was a hidden card. But he had shown it to them on purpose. It meant do things well on their own. Gukti finally knew why Hansu wasn't interested in the position of a leader. You just need to take down the twelve of us huh? He couldn't control the two thousand people alone. That was impossible no matter how strong he was. But that was possible for clan lords. And that was why he had given two thousand people over to the clan lords. Since as long as he controlled the twelve of them, it was like controlling all of them. Han Su mumbled inwardly whilst looking at Gukti. I got it right on time, it absorbed the user's mana to give basic invisibility as well as sending out force waves to interfere with the enemy's perception. And it was something he needed to acquire first in this dungeon of the central island. If this is combined with his movements then most people wouldn't even be able to find him. Of course it would be useless in battle because of the aura and harsh moments but this wasn't for such times. He had invested all his time in the dungeon in order to gain this. Well. Thankfully I got all my runes up to colorless. Han Su, who had finished his thoughts, showed himself back to the clan lords as he spoke. It may happen that a person makes a mistake. We can solve it with talks. Dot. Then the profit you gain from extra hunting will be shared equally with the clansmen participating in the defense and you can just fix the ratio of hunting and defense tomorrow right? Oh and give payments to the injured for compensation. This was exactly like it was written in the original rules. 
A few clan lords grinded their teeth at this but nodded their heads. They realized that they weren't in a situation to try to show their guts anymore. But Gukti still looked at Han Su just in case. Shall I provoke him a bit more? It hadn't ended yet. Even if they didn't follow the rules, he wasn't in the situation to attack them. Since the castle would become dangerous without them. There was a huge difference between twelve lords and one person. And he probably wasn't the only lord with the same thoughts. But Gukti shook his head after seeing Hanso's eyes. I can't, those eyes weren't those which would let him go. He was smiling but the eyes were cold. He had seen those eyes before. It was like this before, those were the same eyes as when he crushed the thirty people on the first day. He realized after Hanso's eyes which were looking for a reason to give a good lesson. He was looking at it in such a way that if he beat one down in order to show the others then it would be fine. He hadn't killed them before but there was no proof that he wouldn't this time. Just this much for today. Yudadut Gukti took a step back after mumbling inside his head. He couldn't stand the fact that somebody else was above him. He really really did not like that. And that was why he wanted to have a stronger power than others. But Han Su had clearly shown him who was holding on to his lifeline. His rage was bubbling but he had to retreat for today. I shall excuse you just for a while. Gukti was a person who firmly believed in the limitations of one person's strength. The person in front of him was a bit different and that was why he had lost superiority here but eventually a chance will come along again. The conference ended like so and Han Su chuckled as he looked at the people walking down. Well. Somebody who uses their head is better, you can't give up on a blade because the edge was too sharp and it might cut you. It was better the sharper it was. Not listening to my words is in the expectations as well. There would be nobody left on this island if he cut off their heads because he didn't like them or because they were greedy. All of the tutorial was full of greedy people, it was just that the degree of their greediness was different. It wasn't that all of them had turned greedy in just ten days. Since ten days was a bit too short to change one's true nature which they had lived with for decades. But ten days was more than enough to kill of every kind person who would care for others. And people realized as others quickly died off next to them. That encouraging good and punishing evil was only possible in a book or something. This was not a place where a kind hero of justice would survive but rather a place where someone who would hit that hero from the back would survive. Well. Eries was a special case. If you searched then a few would exist but then they really needed to be blessed. Since it meant that they had the luck and skill to keep their kind-heartedness whilst surviving. There weren't many people who weren't greedy in front of death and the people who had survived were learning of these things very quickly. The game was very long and they could only survive by crushing others on the island above. So how much would their insides hurt since they had to distribute things fairly in such a situation? This won't last long either. So he needed to do something before then. The thing I need to get next is. The fairy indeed did not lie. Since it was clear that this was a land of opportunity. It's coming. Han Su looked at the sky. And soon after, the fairy appeared. The fairy which had appeared suddenly above the castle. Can't it just piss off? Everyone in the castle frowned as the fairy appeared. The fairy greeted everyone as it saw their looks. Hi everyone. Ah, don't frown like that. I'm not here to lay my hands on you. Dot. If you look at me with such distrustful eyes then you'll hurt me. I'm just here to tell you something which I didn't tell you about. It's not much. If the crystal gets crushed then the whole island will fall. Well. It won't fall right away. It'll fall slowly in about 10 to 20 days. Dot. There wasn't much shock between the people. Since they had expected as such. The fact that they had to protect it with all their strength did not change. The fairy spoke as it looked at these people. The actual important part is the second part. You were all comfortable so far right. The undead is. Well, just child's play. 
this team defended better than I thought. The demons will start coming out on this third day. Dot fuck. Everybody cursed as they looked at the fairy. That son of a fly was like a messenger of destruction. There wasn't a bit of good news whenever it opened its mouth. The fairy made a slightly hurt expression at those words but then opened its mouth again. You guys are too much. Don't you realize how good of a news that the demons are coming out is? This is a really rare chance for you guys. Dot. Everyone looked at the fairy at those words. The fairy did mention it before. That there were extravagant rewards. But even then it would be all over if they died. It isn't some crappy rune or artifact. If you kill the demons then a mini dot crystal comes out. Hee <laughs> hee. Dot. If you collect the mini crystals then you can trade it for a really good artifact. It is much better than the ones you have. It's obvious that the reward would be better the more you collect right. Look at the catalog in your pocket for those. By the way there aren't many demons, you need to try harder than the others in order to get the crystals, everyone made a sour expression. Even if they had such things, it would merely be pearls on a pig's neck. And how would they collect enough from the bits the demons drop to trade it for an artifact and there's thousands of people? They might not be able to lay their hands on one after a whole month. Even if they did lay their hands on it, only the clan lords would do so. And the thing that that thing will throw at us won't be weak. As the people made sour expressions, the fairy added another thing. Oh. I didn't say this yet. There's another use for the crystal. Dot. As long as you have the crystal, you can leave this island to go to the island above at any time. Isn't it a really good privilege? The people with it won't need to care if everybody dies either from falling after the crystal gets shattered or from being invaded by demons right. A total of five people can move on. Hee <laughs> hee. No matter if that giant crystal broke or not. No matter if the defense line broke apart or not. They can escape this dangerous situation to a different island at any time. Which meant that this was a privilege equal to a life. Everyone's expressions changed at these words. The story was different then. The fairy smiled as it looked at everyone's expressions. You get it. About how important of an existence the demons are. Be strong everyone. One demon coming your way for today. And the fairy disappeared as a beastly looking otherworldly existence started to slowly approach them. Everyone started to calculate it their risks. There wasn't enough information yet. They didn't know how strong the demon was and they also didn't know how the others would act. But one thing was clear. That it was better to get it before others do. They didn't charge in first but they had no thoughts of missing this chance. Since it wouldn't matter if they just kill the person who obtained it as soon as they get it. Everyone knew that the best scenario was to attack them as the one who charged it was was about to kill it so everyone stood still while standing close to each other. Asterisk PR note. Kill steel. Hansu shook his head as he looked at this scene. It starts now. A different name for the central island that attracted people below with its sweet runes and artifacts. If you disregard the people who went up using the crystals then the survival rate here was 8%. Dot and this was only when the defense is successful. Since they would all die if they fail. And this was all because of that damnable crystal. I must take it so nobody uses it, if five die in order to attain it and another five go up using it, then five more will die from lack of numbers. Which meant in conclusion, five will live and ten will die. It was not an object that should be allowed to be set free. And at the same time it was something he needed to collect. I will collect it and exchange it for. Hansu walked forward after looking at the others for a while and everyone's eyes shone at Hansu's back instead of the demons. Kabata-chan's note earned that the second sponsored chapter of the day is here. Had to correct too much. We'll whip it dud later.